Welcome to Hurt at Sports Radio. Boybert tried to cross on Rogers. Excellent defender. Hits the tag. Hoiberg saves, Williams speed, Tominaga, head and shoulder fake. Nice pass. Alec lays it in, just like it was drawn up. Shannon doesn't give up, though. Hey, got to get down here and get back. No hesitation, Tominaga. They stopped playing. Defensively, they look winded and didn't recover. Ten to shoot. Shannon. Oh, next. From the corner, he's called. He is cold. Goodness. 40 minutes of outstanding basketball by the Cyclones. And they defeat Houston in the Big 12 championship game 69 to 41. The Cyclones are champions of the Big 12 tournament for the sixth time in school history. All played in the rice. Now the two, now the one, half court shot on the way. There's the buzzer. Missed it. And for the third time in 13 years of the Pac-12 tournament, the Buffaloes are going to the Pac-12 title game as their dream of bookending this league still is alive. It's, it's disappointing uh, that our, you know, our league wasn't. Obviously, it's viewed favorably because of the seed lines of UConn and Marquette and ourselves. Uh, but, you know, disappointed that we weren't able to get a couple more teams in because uh, those those teams are certainly deserving. And they you know they all had terrific years. And uh, I feel for their coaches and their players uh, because uh, if, you know, you win half your games in the Big East, uh, you should be playing in the postseason. Good morning. Welcome in on a Monday here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're here on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well on a busy, busy Monday where we've got some, uh, I think the NCAA committee's got some jokes with their uh, with their selection process a little bit. I think they're, li- I think they're being a little funny with us. Uh, I mean... I don't know. I, I'm not mad. I'm not mad either. I'm thrilled. I, I don't. Uh, now there's some bad seedings. Okay. But I don't know about like if I'm, you know, typically on a on a Sunday, you know, post cleaning up the kitchen. Mm-hmm. There's some consternation, hand wringing, who's in, who's not in. But what happens is, is when you have so many teams in their conference tournaments that weren't going to get in. Mm-hmm. I mean, you watch three spots, four spots evaporate between Oregon. Or we're not even counting that one. Well, I'm counting Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. Uh, North Carolina, North Carolina State. State. And uh, uh, who's the third one? Here? I don't know. There's a me. There's uh, the Mid American. Yep. Um, and maybe one, what about uh, yeah the VCU and uh, VCU what? and Duquesne? Uh, it was a bit Steeler. Yep, that's right. Duquesne is. So yep. I mean, there's four right there, and it's like. Well, once that happens, there were teams I felt like that were going to get left out. Well, no, I just felt like 24 hours earlier they were in. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's it's math, right? So like, it's yeah, it's just it's just simple it's a, math. It's so a I counting mean, exercise. I don't know. I, I I get some of the 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 gripes. There's uh, some teams I don't think belong in. Frankly, mostly Virginia. Virginia doesn't feel like they belong in to me. Outside of Virginia. I didn't have a ton of problems with who got if for, at if, large teams, at least. If Virginia's out, who's in? Well, I mean, you know my answer to that. I wanted Indiana, Indiana State, State to get in. Yeah, I thought they deserved to get in because I think I don't know. And this maybe I'm just the 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 contrarian, but I, I try to be sensible, right? So every every Sunday night or Monday morning, and people will talk about this, mm-hmm. right? And only twice it's really been relevant, right? Like I think where you're, these teams are going to make a run, maybe a VCU, sure, or a UCLA. Where they were a first, four. yeah, or, or a UCLA, right? Absolutely, yeah. So it almost never matters. So, um, but, but that doesn't mean that those teams in the short term can't be head scratching. And that doesn't mean we should excuse the committee for a but, but, questionable decision. But, but I think, decision. See, I see. I think we're focused on the wrong thing. I think. Okay. I think they spend an inordinate amount of time parsing through first four, last four mm-hmm. plans, right? Nobody ever has any problems with the seedings. The actual seedings, I think, are a bigger issue than like Clemson for, at a six. Well, I told like, yeah, I don't. You've thought Clemson was overrated. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not, and they're a dog. 
weird. They're uh, they're an underdog at six at as six as a six eleven. Yeah, it's because they're, um, they're a bad six. It's it. Uh, I mean, they're a really bad six. No, I didn't have. Some people had a little consternation over Kansas. I kind of said all along like, they're closer to a four than a three. Yeah, well, so especially with their current situation. Well, you felt like I think some maybe felt like they were going to get a mulligan. Uh, no, I don't. I mean, maybe some did. I can't speak for them, but I looked at it and I go, "That's a team that's falling." Yeah, I didn't think they were. I I don't think they belonged on the three line. Your car, your Tar Heels got a one, which you weren't expecting. Well, I knew they were going to be the first two or the last one. Yeah, so where I think when last, Tennessee got upset, that really opened the door. So I felt like, and I think maybe people had them closer to that one line than I did going into last mid last week when we well, were talking about. I, it. I texted you as soon as Tennessee lost. I go, "Oh, there goes your one." Yeah, but I thought, but I thought. It seemed like um, Carolina was already in that spot. They were in position to move in for sure. Ahead of Tennessee. Because oh, th- the conversation so? happened quick. Yeah. You know, and, I thought of Tennessee. And maybe it was solidified once Arizona lost. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, you needed both those things to happen. It wasn't just a Tennessee thing. Because I felt like it was Tennessee, Carolina, or Arizona. We're all mm-hmm. playing for that. For, for the that. last one. Yeah. Yeah. And. I think I'm right because Arizona was right there, and they're obviously the top two in mm-hmm. the West region. But it's the, like Boise's a ten. I, I don't. I'm a. We, I'm a. You know, I'm a weird guy, right? Like I watch a lot of basketball. Like I'll tell you about South Florida or, or you know, New Mexico. Some of these teams, right? That mm-hmm. I'm a big. I'm a big whack. Uh, Mountain West guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um somebody's going to run and I think Boise is grossly underseated. I think, I think Clemson is overseated. So I, I think those are more, those are more relevant to what actually, how it actually plays out. Right. Yeah. You know, I do think I will say it's relevant and listen, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't have any connection to Indiana state except for I think my uncle worked there for a while. Like that's, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. That, I would have liked to have seen them in. But I mean, I, I'm with you on that. My it's relevant to these teams because getting into the NCAA tournament. Is I mean, it? a it's a big deal for them just to make it right from a mid major or from a low major conference. And the other thing is, and and I don't know, maybe this shouldn't matter to me, but it does. Your cost a lot of times this ends up costing a guy his job. Yeah, the difference between an NIT. No, I I, I, I and get that. Or, or or maybe making more money. Yeah, or right? making more money or getting bonus. an opportunity somewhere yeah. else, right? They're like, oh, he hasn't made any NCAA tournaments. Mm-hmm. Why would I hire that guy? It's like, well, he won 28 games. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, He lost to a really good Drake team. Like, I, like, what do you want me to do here, right? Drake's kind of the same way. They've missed out on a couple NCAA tournaments because they get to that final, haven't been able to get over the hump. And that's Does that make D-Rock less of a good coach? No. We look at the resume and it's not there on paper the way you'd want it to be. So, like, in the actual basketball games and who ends up winning the NCAA tournament, it, you're right. It doesn't matter at all. Like, do I, I – I don't need Michigan state in this field. I don't. Yeah. I, that's a weird hill for you to be dying on, but, um, cause they've earned, I mean, they, they've earned the right. Whether we like them or not is kind of inconsequential. How, how, have they, I mean, they're 19 and 14. I get that they have I, in, in a big 10 that is not crazy this year. Well, hold on. <laughs> Remember you, you, a couple of these guys out here, you guys have been beating this Big East drum, right? I think the committee we can get to the Big East kind of let you know what they felt about the difference between the Big Ten and the Big East. Not sure why, but we've had this conversation since I've been back, right? And we haven't really been able to agree. The middle of the pack in the Big East versus the middle of the pack in the Big Ten. Sure. And it, and it appears that the middle of the pack in the Big Ten it was valued higher. Was valued higher. And I don't think there's any difference between St. John's and, and Michigan State. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that. I, I do. That's, I just I just don't think I just don't think w- with the, the tone and tenor in which people come across and saying it, that doesn't make it any more true. Well, okay. And and I've said this all along. I don't see like a we huge, can say it emphatically, I don't, but that doesn't make it any more true. I don't true. think there's a huge difference between the second best conference and the fifth best conference. I don't. Okay. Like everybody after the the metrics would probably agree with you. Yeah. I mean, it's big 12 and then it's everybody else. Ken Palm has big East one place. Net rankings has uh, big East, a different place. They have big 10 ahead of them. Like look, depending on what metrics you look at, you're going to get different results. But Mm -hmm. the, the main point is two through five, not a ton of difference. I'm not sitting here banging the drum for St. John's. 
I'm okay that they got left out. But if you're leaving St. John's out, I don't know why Michigan State gets it. Well, it doesn't work like that, though, because – I see those teams as, as essentially equivalent. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so can can some so you have to pick one, right? I don't know that you do. You could have picked Indiana State instead. Yeah, I, I just don't think you're going to get that case made. That's I, fine. I, I, I know that that's a I know that that's not a thing that's actually going to happen. But I would rather see either an Indiana State. So we're talking personal preference. Like, what's the yeah. merit? The net? The merit of the yeah. Like to 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 stand on that business, like my bear for Indiana State is it. And listen, the metrics aren't going to play this out the way in in an appealing way. Uh, okay, and I'm I, acknowledging I just, that. I, all right, I okay. So I'm cool now. I'm listening. I'm not here to say that Indiana State has by the numbers a better case than either of those teams because you look at what Michigan State is. I don't know, fifteenth or something, in, or eighteenth in Ken Palm, which is usually what I go by. St. John's is twenty fifth. Indiana State's a lot further down. I am saying that we know who Michigan State and St. John's are by this point in the season. Yeah. I think there's a lot of times really good mid-major teams, we don't know who they are by this point in the season, and I'd rather give the opportunity to the team yeah, that hasn't that's, had a chance to beat good teams all year. That's kind of where you lost me. I mean, that's fine. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, I, and, and which is understandable, but at like there's a, there's a lot of arbitrary things in there. It's fine. Right. Well, it's really not, though, because that's not how the world works. So I think it is a lot more how the world works than we realize. A lot of it's arbitrary oh, and a lot of it's personal preference. The The thought process is arbitrary when the numbers are not. You, you want one to supersede the other. Now, if you told me in conjunction with, mm -hmm. OK, here, all things being equal, man, the power conferences have had their chance. That's literally what I just said. That's, but all things aren't equal. Okay, fair. Because the you're not winning the you're not winning the numeric side. You're not winning the metric side of it. So, I, I think you have to. There there has to kind of be a, a, a. I mean, I win the metric side of it with Virginia. I don't with St. John's or I yeah. don't with St. John's or yeah. Michigan State, and that's yeah. fine. I do with Virginia. Yeah, Virginia is a bad inclusion. I was surprised. I mean, it's a. I mean, that's a bad inclusion. They're not. Uh, they're they're a mad team. They've been a mad team all year. They get their doors blown off regularly and don't and barely break the forties. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not championing G -G -G Virginia, but be careful when you're filling out your bracket. I, no, I'm a not out of disdain picking against Virginia. In and the listen, first round. I, I I'm a big Tony Bennett guy in terms of him as a coach. I and this that team could very easily make a run. They could very easily get bounced in the first round. Like that's the that there's a ton of variance with Virginia because. When they can't figure out how to how to score, mm -hmm. they're in a lot of trouble, and they are going to get their doors blown off. If they can figure out how to score just enough, then yeah, they could beat anybody in the country. That's they're a hugely high variance team, a hugely high variance team that I don't think warranted inclusion in the NCAA tournament. Mm. Now, I'm actually okay with only the three Big East teams in. Now, it, like it's a weird number, right? You look at the Big East, you go, hey, that, that, I kind of always assume that's a four big le bid league minimum. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you I think any of these teams that got left out individually should be in, right? I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm, I'm here for St. John's or Villanova or, uh, I mean, whoever else is, Providence. I, I, I totally understand each of those teams individually getting left out. It's just that lands you at three instead of four. Right, which is a that's a weird number for the Big East. Yeah, and I I don't again. Well, how would you like to be like Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. You know, I mean Pittsburgh. I'd be looking at Virginia and saying, hmm? that that's what I mean. Like uh, Virginia is a weird inclusion. I don't I don't get it at all. I mean, I thought they were out by a stretch. Uh, yeah, that that that's a that's a definite head scratcher. I I just think this. So many teams, you know, and it's not far fetched. I mean, some people act like they were surprised, but I think we said all along if Nebraska won the Big Ten tournament, there are seven. I thought they were a seven Cl if they made the, the, the championship. And clearly they were almost they were yeah, they were <laughs> trending in the direction of being a seven. Hundred percent. Yeah. That that's that should not have been 
if a, they, a real surprise. If they won the Big Ten tournament, I wouldn't have been shocked if they got a six. Yeah, well, they clearly would have been a seven. You probably would have had some folks. That would have been a yeah. discussion point. But I think they were a, a rock solid seven if they made the championship. Is there were times you watched them play the other day and you're like, ah, oh, they're pretty good. Well, you know, Friday night, especially and and then in the first got, half against Illinois. Kind of hit the wall. Yeah. But well, and they couldn't, I mean, they they got they ran into Terrence Shannon. Yeah, as did the rest of the conference. Yeah, as everybody else did, right? Man. Like he was on he was on one this weekend. No, no, he's that dude. No, I know. No, like he's not 40 a night. Like, come on. He, he he's, he's really really good. He's he's the guy that I said a month ago. Yeah, should have been in serious discussion with Zach Eady as player of the year, and that was a month ago. He hadn't even put up the circuit. He hadn't even gone on his run yet. That's that's the, fair. This dude, he's he's unbelievable. But listen, he gave Nebraska a forty piece. You can't tell me he's been doing this. Like no, he hasn't been giving not what I said. Pieces not now. what I said. It's not what I said. Like, yes, he is that guy. He he's, also was he, on a heater. He's that guy. He he elevated his points per game by 10 in the tournament. Yeah. But he's been that guy. We just don't watch him, right? Like, we or we don't like him or we say, well, what about this? Or he may have allegedly done that. Like, if you just watch his game. No, he's incredible. And it's the same thing that we said about Illinois all year. Like, they're starting five, six. Is really really good now, and the I get, score I, anybody. I, I get it. You know, you get you've got got the under. We we kind of seen this with them before, yeah. And I don't I I don't trust Brad Underwood no, as I'm, far as I can it, put it him. Makes one hundred percent. Um, and they can't stop anybody. I mean, we they can't stop. Anybody. Well, there's going to be a handful of teams that that have that problem. Yeah, it's I, like all of the SEC. Well. <laughs> I mean, Duke's going to have to figure out how to get some stops in this. There's some tough matchups. If, if, like, you're a hoops head, like, these end of – I don't know if, like – obviously, I don't like Clemson, so I could see that being an upset. Um, yeah, I think Clemson is not good. You know, and we'll, we'll get into, Clemson like, should the probably be on the other side of that seed line. Like, they're, like, a closer to a 10 or 11 than I think they're a 6. I, I think, you know, I don't know how far Boise can go, but I think they're better than a 10. Um, you like I, BYU is the six. You've been on BYU for a while. I like BYU. That's a that is a tough matchup. D- Duquesne in the first one. No, BYU, oh, BYU with anybody in the in the se- like that next round that second round matchup with BYU like BYU Illinois maybe that is a uh, it's tough. That's that's there's gonna be a lot of points in that one. I think. <laughs> well, see, Dane Danger like they're gonna like you Illinois. They're gonna force Illinois bigs to mm-hmm. play differently in that yeah. one if. If both teams win, because yeah. I'm already looking at like, like the how the matchup goes. Um, and BYU defensively mm-hmm. can give Damask some problems because they have a they have a similar kind of defensively they'll they'll deal them they'll deal him some fits mm-hmm. if if that matchup if, happens. yeah if they get there yeah. you know but I mean like for the Providences the the Seton Halls the St Johns the one more I'm clearly thinking of. Maybe Pitt. Mm-hmm. Um, probably ahead of like Oklahoma. I didn't love the Oklahoma case. Yeah, I, I wasn't I didn't have a problem with Oklahoma but, left out. Like the Duquesnes and the North Carolina states of the world, like the Oregons. Mm-hmm. And how about Nick Baugh two weeks ago just calling his shot? With, co- with are, are we gonna act like he didn't just come on here and say with Dana? Yeah, yeah, and and I think people listening probably rolled their eyes because that's his guy. Well, but they weren't playing particularly well, right? It just but, on a humbug, on a random. Hey guys, listen. I mean, this is what Dana does, and they're healthy. I keep thought, an eye on Oregon, and I get it. People driving around were like, "Oh, I yep. kind of thought he was saying it in jest, almost." I don't. Like I don't he, think he but, was now, he, but but he wasn't though. In the moment, I was like, "All right." He said, gonna. "This is what Dana does." It is well, and you, uh, yeah, he's, and we're gonna talk to Nick at nine o'clock today, so we'll we can follow up with him on on the whole Dana Altman situation. Um, we're also gonna talk to Sam McEwen at eight, but no, I that's a good call out because I, in the moment, I remember being like, "Man, all right." <laughs> <laughs> you know who else is kind of sneaky? Ooh. This is one of the benefits of never going to bed. Washington State is going to be a problem as a 10 for, for Drake. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was hoping they'd get a little better matchup than that. Because I want to see how cool. So you got him. You so you got you got TJ and you got the whole Iowa State South Dakota State mm -hmm. thing, and then you got D Rock kind of tucked up there. That that and they're in Omaha, mm -hmm. but he Washington State for the way that Drake defends, mm -hmm. it's it's Could gonna problems. it's gonna. I imagine that game will be fairly high scoring. Mm, interesting. Washington State is weird. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I haven't watched. I just Washington watched them against year. Washington. La was that last weekend? Um, it's gonna be interesting. I think there, I've, there's some. So I haven't gone in yet. Yeah, like just to look at the. You haven't like made your picks yet or anything. Or the remember the point spreads? I go up oh, of yeah. the of the ten yeah. sevens and the eight nines. How many of the lower the, the low well, lower seeds will be favored? You mentioned the six elevens with Clemson. Clemson's a dog is a six. Yeah. Um, I, I I am mad, man. I'm trying to look Cle at some Cle of these. Clemson's not, not Clemson's very not very good. good. Like Clemson is. I don't. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know why I'm hung up on that. I'm gonna stop saying that. Probably because like, that's like the fourth time I've said that in a week, and they've done nothing to me. I'm gonna get off Clemson. It's probably no, no, you're not. It's probably because you've just seen them too much. Like, I that's have. a super average team. I'm like, and every time I wonder how. Yeah, every time. But I mean, they obviously do a good job. Of what? <laughs> They're always here. <laughs> I mean, I mean can, it's been a long time since Dale Davis. They're always here. <laughs> no, they're fine. They're a fine program. I just, I don't, this year, I, you know, what, what, what should they be like a nine, 10? Yeah, they're a 10. Yeah. They should be on the other side. I mean, they're almost on the exact opposite of the seed line they should be on. Yeah. And let's not act like the chickens could fully be coming home to roost in my backyard because I, I, I was like, I don't know. It's, Texas A&M or Mississippi State, are they that good? And now, <laughs> here comes A&M with a chance to play Nebraska. A&M with a chance to play Nebraska. If, if Nebraska matches their energy, they'll be fine. I will get into that in a second because, believe it or not, you're walking on air. One Trev Alberts had some feelings and thoughts that he thought he needed to tweet out I can't, I, about this matchup. I'm miffed. About, at him? Yeah. Good. Cause I am too. Welcome to the petty train. I, 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 I he needs to stop. So he needs I, you to. Know, stop. You, you, you know, I rather be right than well liked. Right? Yeah. So just on a humbug, mm -hmm. I decided to kind of go back and scroll through how many unsolicited or non quote tweets he had before. He has before. almost none. And it almost never happens. I've got a theory on what's happening here. So I'm like, so this, so I'm driving home. I just dropped my mom off last night. Shout out Mama Benning. Yeah. she. Oh, she's so funny. Um, in particular. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Um, so, which is fine. Because I watched her, like, pick up the little, like, wrappers and scraps and stuff on the, the table just to discard it. So there was, like not in the way and i look and i'm like this is exactly where i get it from. oh yeah you come by it honestly that, probably that was like that is exactly where i get it from but i'm sh i was thinking to myself well i'll tell you let's call that i'll tell you i'll tell tease. you my theory a little tease you here. can tell me yours but i want to see if they're similar there is because i i'm a, i'm yeah, something's wrong in the state of Denmark. I mean, listen, somebody asked on the other day, you mad yet, TP? I think he's I think we're getting him there. More Trev Alberts nonsense coming up next. We will be back. Shannon has the loose ball. Outlet ahead to Hawkins. And the Illini are going to win. Shannon has the loose ball. Outlet ahead to Hawkins. 
and the Illini are going to win the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Big Ten Tournament Championship for the Fighting Illini. We will be back. We will be back. We'll be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Shannon has the loose ball. Outlet ahead to Hawkins. And the Illini are going to win the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Down to six, five, four, three, two, one. Big Ten Tournament Championship for the Fighting Illini. We're back here on Heard at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. Hello, friend. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well. Uh, let's get to our, gu- our guy, Wyatt, before oh, we... Uh, I didn't know we had a phone call. Otherwise, because I'm going to be honest, this this next topic's probably going to 
monopolize a lot of time in the rest of the show because I feel some kind of way. <laughs> I so, feel some type of way. Let's, hey. let's get Wyatt on first before I derail the entire program. Wyatt, what's going on, bud? Hey, I just wanted to talk about uh, Tomanaga because, you know, surprise, it's not why I call him, but, uh, but I do want to say I just want to... very on brand. <laughs> I want to appreciate that, you know, during this whole run that you know, there's been talk about him being Jack, Japanese Steph Curry, but there really hasn't been talk about him being the novelty of the Asian players, though I haven't heard any, like, comparisons to Jeremy Lin or the Yao or anything like that. And, and it's, you know, there hasn't been talk about him looking, you know, like he's not very athletic looking. But that, I'll say this because I'll, I'm the only one to say this. He does look like he belongs more as a grad assistant in biology class than he does like he won. <laughs> He's a basketball athlete. Is, can I laugh? <laughs> you can not, yeah, because I, because you know, like in my, I'll say like even in my prime, I look more like an athlete than he did. And I will say, even like right now, I look at him, I'm like, you know what? I could probably take him, but obviously, there's no way I would be able to. So, I just wanted to appreciate, you know, that you know, it has been more talk about his game and less about him just being a novelty of this. Uh, you know, it probably isn't the back of a lot of people's mind, but, you know, I do like that we've kind of moved on from that. All-conference tournament team, too. So you, you came up last night when I was dropping my mom off Asian Wyatt because she has nice. some – she has a – neighbor. well, it's kind of a neighbor. They live by the elementary school. They have chickens. Oh, and nice. her neighbor, like right by her in the backyard, has chickens, and they also have ducks. And she said her neighbors just built a new door for the for – the, is it a coop? Chicken coop? Chicken yeah. coop, yep. Um, and she asked me if I read about the arson that was set to the other chicken coop here locally. So that wasn't you, was it, Wyatt? No, thankfully it was not. Okay. I just, we talked a lot about chickens last night and okay. I, and I won't tell you what we had, but it did, ha it did take soy sauce. So there's a joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to do hey, it. Hey, I, hey, I still eat chicken. Wife does not, but I still eat chicken. Appreciate the call, Wyatt. That's why we're doing it on a Monday morning. See, I think I'm allowed to laugh at that because technically India is in Asia, so I think I can that's laugh at a, those jokes. That's a little bit of a reach. A little bit of a stretch there? Okay. I won't make any jokes then. I was going to I was gonna make a joke about him checking my math homework, but it's fine. Um, well, if you, if, you if you do his English, <laughs> make sure it's spelled correctly. Like, we're very good at spelling these. Um, the, so what Shane, your, you okay? No, I'm not going first. Okay, I'll go. I'll go first on Trev. I'll, I'll go first. Um, My buddy thinks he's drunk. <laughs> well, first of all, you said you went back and checked the tweets, and because yeah, we both a had, lot, a lot. We both had this perception. I didn't go super far back, but I did scroll for a while, and I was like, a lot of reposts, almost exclusively. Yeah, his his Nebraska AD tenure was almost exclusively reposts of other uh, of other Nebraska accounts and celebrating the accomplishments of teams, whatever. So this is out of character, what we've seen over the last few days. Or it's out of his is it's out of his Twitter character at least. I don't know him as a person. But so A, it's weird, right? He he's making this switch. It feels like to me, he is. I mean, first of all, and I gotta give a shout out to Avery from Hurt at Sports. She brought this up. Um, but hello, friend. <laughs> It feels like one of those situations where like your friend is going through a breakup and all of a sudden they're very active on social media. And I said, I can literally tell because I'm getting to about that age where, you know, people, you know, from high school are starting to get divorced. I got in on early. I got in on it early, like six years ago. But you, you beat the rush. Yeah, I was I was a trendsetter, I think, in that one. But, you know, you can kind of tell. When there is a dramatic increase in social media activity, you're like, oh, they're going through something, right? They're, they're just tweeting their way through it or they're Instagramming their way through it, right? It's a, I can, and my success rate on identifying this when I'm like, oh, this person's posting a lot more than normal. And then I start to dig a little bit. And it's like, oh, they're divorced. Um, it's like 85%. It's an unreal high rate. It feels like Trev is that guy that cheated on his girlfriend that everybody likes. And with this, person that no one else really likes you know kind of a you know I, I don't i don't i don't know that i want to call texas a&m white trash but it's fine um this kind of you know no nobody really likes texas a&m i don't even think the sec or texas likes a&m 
it feels like he's just trying to show how happy he is. Like, oh, look how look how great it is with this new person. When in reality, he knows maybe he bleeped up a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of my theory. So that's a lot more plausible than mine. I love it. Let's go. Let's hear it. So at no point did I ever think Trev managed his own social media account at Nebraska. But I've never asked him, so I can't confirm or deny. Okay. Right? So, but I do know he has some super people. Um, you know, his hand like uh Mr. Kelly. Like he just has some really good guys. He that's my that's my travel mm-hmm. partner. East Coast guy, super no nonsense. I love him. He's got some people around yeah, that's, him. Yeah, that was like him. Trev's right hand man. Mm-hmm. Lindsay is like his admin assistant, she's nails salt to the earth. So mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, maybe somebody that I don't know is like handling his social media account because mm-hmm. he's it's not his. It's just not him. Mm-hmm. Maybe he got the college station, and somebody took the handcuffs off. And they're like, no, maybe he's like, hey, so who does your social media? And they're like, oh, you know, Frank does, mm-hmm. and. Trev's like, okay, here, cool. Like, help get me acclimated. I trust you. <laughs> and this is what's happened. <laughs> See, because we've seen typos, deletes, go back and clean up. Like, it's it's not. It's messy. It's 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 very messy. It's messy. And not just the content. It's like. Like, it's actually messy. I'm like. But the content is also messy. Here's my like, like bring the bus down, Will. Like, would Trev say that? Here's my pushback on it. So maybe like he's giving it to somebody, and now they're like, you know, in his first, you know, athletic meeting. Hey, Frank. Uh, maybe the, chill on the the, the, the the social media account has to kind of fit my personality, like I, you or 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 the perception anyway. Here's so, why. I, so that's what I that's what I'm thinking. Here's where I would push back on it being someone else or someone from A and M. Because it, first of all, I don't know why anybody that works for AM would be tweeting about Nebraska as much as that account is. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> no, it really that, that, doesn't. It's a good point. Like, that's where I'm like, because I think like it would make sense because somebody brought this up. I was having this conversation last night. Who's somebody? Uh, TK. I was, I was DMing with TK last night. Oh, okay. And so we're getting some legal, okay. <laughs> we're getting some legal advice. Yeah. You want to borrow my shovel? My Criminal gloves? prosecutor. No, that's fine. Um, I did ask one of my buddies. I said, can we have code so I don't have to text that over, you know, put that in writing. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to hire TK to, to prosecute Trev for fraud. Um, wow. But (laughs) L2 here for hurt feelings. I do have hurt feelings and I'll get into it at some point on why my feelings are hurt as bad as they are. Cause I spent a lot of time. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about that thinking about why I'm as mad as I am. And I think I was mad. (laughs) Mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. Um, I I think I reached something and I'll get into it later, but I don't think it's an A&M person because why on earth would anybody that works for A&M be that focused on what's happening at Nebraska? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Because I think what you want to like. Sure. No, I'm, I'm asking the question. Because I think we're an easy target. But he's not like, it's not trolling because he's not. But I think, I think historically nebraska on social media is an easy target we are very quick to clap back very active very active yeah. we love voting mm-hmm. very we good lo- on twitter polls we will defend mm-hmm. like we'll go all in like i maybe maybe it's that i don't know but i'm just that would be like at first blush that's what i would say i could you. see it if they were and maybe they're having fun all and out trolling i think he's trolling it's almost not like if it's trolling, it's not aggressive enough. They're not trolling very well. Like usually, trolling is like pretty I over mean, the top. Are you the barometer? Or are they? I mean, they can be bad at what they do. That's fine. yeah, right. I mean, that could that could be a thing. I mean, a lot of people, it doesn't have to meet like a prerequisite for a lot. A lot of people are bad at their jobs. That's fine <laughs> for 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 great. I I I am a little. I'm shocked. So, I, I I just did not like we, why. Well, that's a good question. We've only got a, a few seconds left here, but we'll continue getting into this because I, I do want to tell you why I'm mad because I it's not just I mean, it is just me being petty, but there's an actual reason I'm mad about it. Like there really is. <laughs> okay. We'll get to that next year. <laughs> okay. on Sports Radio.
We will be back. We will be back. We'll be back. Cowboy hats and dancing shoes and is returning to the NC. We will be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Andy Kennedy salutes the crowd. The buzzer sounds. The game is over. The confetti flies here at Dickey's Arena. Cowboy hats and dancing shoes. It's a great look in the Lone Star State as UAB is the AAC champion and is returning to the NCAA tournament. Wrapping up hour number one on a Monday with UAB, apparently. <laughs> We're live on AM 590 ESPN Omaha. It's all about Texas, isn't it? <laughs> what Texas is it? A&M. I mean, it's, isn't that what this great state is all about, Texas? He's, he's mad because I was mad at him about not playing music. It was UAB. What does UAB have to do with Texas? Okay, good talk. Cowboy hats and oh, dancing shoes. Cowboy hats, absolutely. I didn't think of that. Well, no, if you were not, listening. Not allowed to wear cowboy hats anywhere except for Texas. 
Uh, Cowboy hats and dancing shoes. This is Heard at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN, all my ESPN Tri-Cities. I don't even recognize what we're hey, doing this go, morning. Go give yourself a timeout. Yeah, I think you just need to take a lap. Yes, on go this. take a lap. Um, we got it for about the next 10 minutes. We'll be okay. Um, I'm Robbie Lula. That's DB. Uh, no, I... I, I was digging in I was digging into my fields. You know, I was doing a little self inventory here. So I was like, "Am I being a little ridiculous?" Yes, maybe. <laughs> eh, it's I'm not I'm not gonna go as definitive yeah, as you are. Yeah, that. I said that a little too quick. You, were a little you quick. want me to give it a little thought? Yeah, like at least pretend. Me, okay, about ready? It. Ask me again. Am I being ridiculous? <sighs> Probably. Let's see. That's better. I Is that think. better? No, way better. Way better. <laughs> But let me tell you why I'm here, right? Because I, if you think I'm just being mad for the sake of being mad, you're you're not actually correct. Because I, I I initially I was like, this is BS. F you, Trev. Like wow. that was my initial reaction. Okay, was like kick rocks. Like our guy at Triple B said, eat bleep. Like, hey, he's nuts. He's 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 exactly matching my vibe, and I love it. Yeah. Um. So I, I started digging into it. I was like, why? You ever spend any time with him? No. I've met him a couple times. Oh, know. man. <laughs> okay, keep going. Um, so I started digging into this because I was like, okay, I I like to allow myself to feel what I feel, and then I like to figure out if I need to move on or not, or if I need to. That's a, that's a therapist move. Yeah, 100%. It's from being in therapy. Like it's. Um, so I, I started digging into it. And this is, and I'm still mad this morning, so you know where I landed. <laughs> that you're validated. <laughs> uh, 100%. Because. Here's why I'm mad. It's not that he took another job necessarily. Like, because there, I think in Sam's piece, and we'll talk to Sam McEwen at, at 8 a.m., I think it mentions that he was offered the college football playoff executive chair position or whatever and turned it down. I would have understood that job move. I really would have. But we went through this last week. I think you knew that, right? Uh, I didn't know it specific. I knew he was interested or there was interest. I didn't yeah. know okay. there was an Fair. offer and it Fair. turned down. Fair. Um, it felt more speculative than I realized at that point. So I would have been okay with that job, right? And I would have been okay if there had been a real, I don't know if scandal is the right word, if the lawsuit had been a bigger hurdle than maybe we realized, whatever. But by Trev's own words, and maybe he's not telling the whole truth, and that's fine, but I can go only go off of what he says, right? At this point, I can only go off of what I've been told and what he said. And it seems like it got a little more frustrating than he was willing to deal with, and he bailed. He's clearly mad. Yes, right? like you can. T- like if, in fact, like Anthony. So a lot of these, a lot of you guys feel like if he's running his own Twitter account, he's clearly mad. Which is fine, right? But and, and listen, he has the right to do whatever he wants to do. I have the right to be mad about it. Yeah. Right? So, and I think that's kind of the. Go ahead. So, and uh, sorry, I'll, just a little bit more here, and then you can you can go and tell me I'm I'm being irrational. No, stuff. I wouldn't. I would never. Nah, I think you might. That's kind of what we do here. Um, here's here's why I'm actually mad about it though, because he got a little frustrated and just decided to bail. And I said this last week. He gave up on us. That's what makes me mad to my core. Because you know he's talking about oh you know there's some inherent challenges at Nebraska whatever. Listen, any I'm. I love being from Omaha and being from Nebraska. I do. Like, I'm genuinely proud to be from here. Okay. It means a lot to me. And I like it when we, as a collective community, succeed. I also understand certain things are harder here. I get that. I get that we don't have the population base to use, to have either the fundraising be as easy as it is in Texas or to have the recruiting be as easy as it is in Texas or whatever. I get there are inherent challenges just because you're here. I understand it's really hard to field a good baseball program year in and year out because we're a cold weather state. I get it. I get it's a little harder here. I also think when you persevere and you win here or you do well here, it makes it more worth it. It was really, really frustrating, and this is where I got mad, was somebody who we thought got us gave up on us. He, we thought he understood that, yeah, it's a little harder here, but it's worth it. The, what, the love you get, the support you get, your wins are, feel better because of how much the people care about this place. We thought we had a guy in Trev Alberts that got that about this place. Mm-hmm. All of his quotes before Wednesday indicated he understood that about this place. 
So when that guy gives up on you, that hurts more. Yeah, I, I so I'm with you for about ninety six percent of that. Okay, where am I? Where where are you? Where do I lose you? The breaking point. Like that's fair, right? So on, on the surface, I I love like because I'm the same way, right? But at, at but at some and you know that like <laughs> there's some real life tangible examples about dealing with some of these people out here, like. I enjoy exhausting all options, trying to figure it out, because I think coming out of the back end, you're going to be better for it. Mm -hmm. I just wonder what the breaking point is. Yeah. Like what? what so, you know, what what happened? Well, that's what, part what, of what's what, frustrating. What, what happened between one o'clock and four o'clock? Mm -hmm. you, you know, like th those are the things that that kind of gnaw at me a little bit, like. Because I mean, it sounds like somebody say something about willing to be made. Somebody, somebody, like, was a mom joke the breaking point? Was it was like something stupid? Was it real? What, what personally snapped like in Trevor's brain? Yep. Where he's like, I'm out. Yeah. I, I mean, because you have to understand all that comes with it. Mm -hmm. how, how about? And I don't think he does. So I had somebody real close to me Friday. Is it Friday? was talking to me about collateral damage mm -hmm. he's like there's a lot on this one. It's like db do, do you think we understand the collateral damage going forward and i think he's he was talking about folks in the office mm -hmm. and i said how bad could it have been question mark the response back to me cold-blooded well, like Trev's that's where he la that's where he landed on it yeah and he and he's he's pretty close to it. He so and, I'm thinking, man. And I said this last week. Either Trev didn't understand the consequences, which what we know about Trev that seems unlikely, or he didn't care. At some, yeah, he had a breaking point. Like he just stopped caring. Yeah, that's the point. That's what pisses me off. That's why I'm mad because I listen. He has the right to do whatever he wants. He has the right to have a breaking point. I have the right to be mad. So about the him. so so the social media thing is driving you up the wall. Yes. Okay. If you're going to go take a new job, just go do your new job. I thought Rank Mast and Josiah Alec, those guys were fantastic just at the podium. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not playing the AD. We're playing A&M. That was a pretty spicy. <laughs> My buddy John, he's like, wow, now the, now the women's team too. I mean, I get it. Like, but I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ride on the fact that, no one person is is bigger than the institution. And I and I went back and I yeah. was I was reading some of the stuff that that Simple said, you know, because he talked to a couple of athletic directors and one of them being Bill Moose, mm -hmm. which is a great example. So me taking some tidbits from from Bill Moose is mm -hmm. a great example of what I was telling you last week. Sometimes people that you typically don't have an affinity for or you don't think mm -hmm. we're good at something or maybe wronged you or whatever will say some things and you're like oh, i could vibe with that i'm gonna i can entertain that yeah 100 percent. Th there was a and so i don't want people to be dismissive of the fact that we didn't think bill moose was very good at his job mm -hmm. to detract from some of the points that he made talking to Sybil because i thought he there were some legit points you know, that he made. And it wasn't just, it just wasn't a board of regents bash. Cause you know, I'm not, I'm not for that either. Like mm -hmm. a couple of things can be true at once. People can have to get better, but I also believe there, there can be some culpability on a lot of other people's parts too, mm -hmm. to keep it from, from getting, getting the that way that, that it is. Yeah. Right. So I said, how'd we get here? How'd we get here? Right. Like we've got to own some of that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he talked about like some of the intricacies and the dynamics and when people get mad and they'll pick up the phone and they'll call other people. And then at that point, it becomes a political position and mm -hmm. it could be anything from need more free parking to, you know, not enough this, not mm -hmm. enough that. He says it can be overwhelming. But the but the academia portion of it and the balance from an athletic director I think is interesting because you you have I'm gonna go back to what I said last week. You better redefine 
the roles and what you want it to be if you're ever going to get better going forward if you want to keep this from happening again because you're trending in the wrong direction we'll get into that more coming up next we've got sam McEwen from the omaha world herald we will i'm sure talk about trev you will we'll talk about the uh, men's and women's basketball teams as well here on her sports radio We will be back. We will be back. We'll be back. We'll be back.
You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Here is the sports editor for the Omaha World Herald, Sam McEwen. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Sam McEwen. Uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna throw the ball. And you just stand back there and throw it where you want to go. You know, that kind of thing. Sam McEwen. Are you guys going? Um, sure. Now, Sam McEwen. Kicking off hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're joined now by Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Sam, how are you this morning? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, we're making it, Sam. Ravi's trying to drive me crazy, but um, outside of that, man, uh, I'm happy about North Carolina. I'm I'm scratching my head over why people would make light of what the Steelers are doing because it hasn't cost them very much. Uh, I'm happy about Nebraska men and women's being in the dance. I'm happy about Creighton. I'm happy about D-Rock coming to Omaha. Uh, and it's Monday. How about you? Same here. It's going to be a really fun and busy week for the World Herald. Um, you know, we've, we'll have writers scattered all over the country and um, looking forward to it. Yep. And lots of, you know, lots of teams coming here. Uh, so you know, it's, it's like, fun. oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, fun fun stuff this week at uh, CHI and and uh, fun stuff obviously in Pittsburgh and Memphis and out in Corvallis. So uh, and then you got an AD search. Well, maybe you know, sort of. We'll see. Well, uh, but it's it's gonna. Well, I mean, can you have can you have an AD search? Hey, can just just AD drive forty five minutes down the road. You don't have to search too far. Isn't Pollard gonna be in Omaha? <laughs> I'm, can just, you have I'm that, just kidding. Can you Sorry, conduct, Sam. That's possible, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Can you conduct that surge? Without with, a president? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, they'll, hire, they'll, if, they'll, if, they'll definitely hire the AD before the president. Well, you watch. Well, I'm not saying that won't happen. but we'll I know. It seems weird, doesn't it? Who it's be. <laughs> All right. Um, let, aren't you asking just, for trouble, you know, though, if you do that? Aren't you asking for trouble if you hire the AD before listen, the president? Listen, man, I, since we haven't done things in correct order ever, in a long time, so I, that's what I'm saying. It's part of the recalibration. <laughs> Sam, I got one, tr- one Trev question, and I'm going to move on because I got, I got, we got bigger fish to fry. But you're very good at kind of these black couch things, and you don't charge me by the hour, so I kind of like this. Um, why does it seem, in your opinion, when he's had it or he gets to his breaking point, he's willing to burn the whole thing down? Well, I think that's uh, it's it's part of his. Um, I, I think it's probably part of of his philosophical and ideological makeup. Um, and I and and you know I, I kind of laid it a little bit of it out. I thought in my column that just ran today. So a couple things. One, he's been in the NU system fifteen years. He's been the Nebraska athletic director two and a half, but he's been in the system for fifteen years. Uh, two. You know, his kids are out of high school now. If you're going to make a move, if you're going to do something really different, this is the window. Um, this window between now and I don't know when when you stop doing things like these. And, and let me give you an example. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, Bill Moose walked away from Oregon when in, in his mid 50s. Uh, he just walked away, and then he took a couple of years off, and then he went to Washington State. And I think everybody would say that his time at Washington State was pretty successful. And and then and then he left there, mm-hmm. kind of walking away from some you know, you know money stuff and whatever. And his time here was not successful. And by that I mean, not that he hired. I mean Fred Hoiberg, I think is going to end up being a successful coach, but he, there wasn't a lot done. There was a lot of money spent, and not a lot got done. And he didn't. I don't think he did a ton while he was here. And so you know the, there was there's the time to make that move. And, that, and for it to be super productive. And I think that, that Albert is in that window, one. Two, um, I think he's a person who can see, when you're able to see around the corner, sometimes what you see is problems. Yeah. And so I think, I think there are things that he, he looks around the corner. He sees some things around the corner, not just the presidential thing, but other things. That I, to be honest with you, I don't, want to report because i'm not sure they're going to come to fruition i i feel like i've heard from him in the last however many months a 
a little bit of a foreboding vision. Yeah. Um, not, not sure Nebraska is going to stay in the Big Ten. I know. <laughs> It's been a little dark, and so like it's like I don't really know that I agree with you. I understand that your ability to to plot out the steps and potentially, you know, see some bad things happening and, and not wanting to be around for that. But I don't know that those things will happen. Uh, so those kind that kind of quality, his personality, he's a little bit of a fundamentalist. Yeah. So that's the part that's the part that's bugging me, which is why anger wasn't my my an, initial response. It was. What is this? What he's been hinting around when I and maybe I I read it wrong, right? I thought it was about, and, and maybe wrong isn't the right word. All the foreboding stuff about positioning and the academics and the strengthening of the budget and where they wanted to be to position themselves in college football's landscape going forward and to remain in the Big Ten Conference. And you and I even talked about it, right? You were, you were like, well, I don't, I don't think Nebraska would ever get kicked out of the Big Ten. And I've said, no, no, I agree with you. It's just weird that maybe that was the message that he was that, – and that's why I can't land on the fact I, I am uneasy about it. he just took his ball and went home. Like, it just doesn't seem like he would have this magical breaking point and he's like, yep, I'm out. Like. Maybe he was forecasting the negativity all along when he was talking to us through these interviews. That's possible. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. know. You know what no, I mean? No, no, no. That's yes. I mean, I, I do know what you mean. And and I I think also, you know, that sentiment that he sort of expressed toward the end of our conversation of like, well, maybe things will be better if I'm not there. And I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> but I, I understand what he means in the sense that like this is and I'm I'm not quoting him here. I'm this is my own analysis of it. Nebraska's fired a lot of people. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. They didn't fire Trevor. Mm -hmm. He left. And sometimes leaving is a wake up call of like, you guys wanted me to say. And I turned down and he did. I he turned down Jobs that we're going to pay more money. I don't know what he's going to pay them, but uh, he turned some stuff down that people would have been mad about, but they would have been like, "Well, okay." Um, that that uh, that makes this look like, well, this guy just left. This is kind of like your, you know, this is kind of like your wife leaving, and just like that, you come home and you, the suitcase is gone, and this is what that is a little bit, and mm -hmm. it's, you know. Um, it's a shock. I mean, Bork knew uh, that he was talking to a &M, but yeah, you know, this, this is this is one of those moments where you're kind of like, okay, this is the person we wanted to stay. We have other people over here who are whatever. I think he felt like he was in the middle a little bit. Um, I, as the other thing I wrote today is like, you know, the irony is he took himself out of the hierarchy of the chancellor's office, and he was answering straight to the president, which they don't have. And the other thing that's true is that Nebraska Athletics is now like its own campus. And so its fortunes are, are matched against the fortunes of the other campuses. See, And so part of what happened is, you know, all the criticism that would have been directed at the UNL chancellor of like, hey, how can you go out and ask for a $450 million Memorial Stadium yep. upgrade was then directed directly at Trez because the UNL chancellor could say, well, it's not me doing this. So, so say, preach. Because this is what this is what I was trying to connect last week when I said, "Hey, the good thing that can come." This is why I'm not pro just hammering regents, right? Do they need to clean up some things? Sure. Do do we need to tweak the process? Maybe. But see, they made some concessions for what they thought was the greater good. They just kind of like acquiesced to to the individual, not like the idea of what they were really subscribing. It, it was unprecedented. So they tried to do us a solid and it blew up in our face. And without a president, Trev was always the one getting the heat. I, like, yeah, like it, the, it broke, but it, yeah. it came out of good intentions. Like, does, does that right. make sense to right. you? It does. It's ironic. The it, very it's thing we wanted was the very thing that, that's why last the end of last week bugged me so much. I'm like, all right, but I, I'm not just going to bash, bash, bash away because right. 
what happens was is we made some concessions to help out and it came back to bite us in the rear end. Let's go back to the old way. Reset what it is that we're here to do as the BOR elected officials, educate mm -hmm. folks, make the mission statement on athletics being the front door to the university or it isn't. I like your separate campus thing because they that needs that's the elephant in the room, right? It's like mm -hmm. too many academia come here and they get mad that this is some standalone independent money making operation. And I know it drives some people crazy, right? Like mm -hmm. they they have, to, I'm not telling you anything I don't think you don't know, but to yeah. figure out how to yeah. play nice together, you better start to say some things out loud. Right. I mean, one of the challenges is now, I mean, the president, whoever that person is going to be, uh, has to be prepared uh, to oversee athletics, Nebraska athletics, and kind of like it. Yeah, like and be, and be okay be, with what it is, even as an academics person. Sure. And, and so, I, you know, the regents had begun to assert more control over over athletics um, in 2015 when Hank Bounds, you know, was given the power to approve or not approve changes to contracts over $500,000. That was in reaction to Sean Eichhorst not asking the, the, the elected Board of Regents whether he could fire Bo Pelini in 2014. Mm. Because in a lot of ways, he did ask in 2013. And it was kind of like, you're not doing it. And that was pretty simple. But in 2014, he wasn't asking, and on top of that, he wasn't he wasn't asking anybody who he was who he should hire in Polini's wake. And then they went out and hired, and and you know Mike Riley well too. Mm -hmm. I think I don't think Mike Riley was the right fit for this place, but the level of disparagement that was that was pushed toward <laughs> Mike Riley yeah. was on. Yeah, you you, you yeah. talk about a guy that could have walked because he couldn't do his job right. Oh yeah. I mean, it was unbelievable how how easily and quickly he was disparaged, and how easily and quickly some people in the media were willing to do that on behalf of others. He got he got bullied. So, uh, <laughs> he literally so got bullied. Part of, part of everything that was going on in that time was like, we like Bo, we're mad that he's gone, we don't like this person, we're going to change all of our processes, and then in 2017. We're going to go get our guy, and he's going to come back, and he's going to win all these games, and we will be proven right. Yep. And then for various reasons, he didn't win those games. Yeah. And, I, and I probably have more sympathy and empathy for his situation than many people do. I, I think it was a hard situation, and I feel for it. Wait, but are you talking about game. Frost? Yes, absolutely. Uh, like, uh... He did – well, I know. And – you, you obviously understand way more dynamics there than I do. But my point is that the whole thought process was we're going to level everything that had happened when I course was here. We'll, we'll get rid of all those folks. We will have changed the nature of the relationship between the board. Oh, and OK. Athletics. You're talking about what he, the, you're talking about the uncertainty that we he walked into. We didn't do him any favors. Right. OK. OK. Well, I mean, he, yeah. I'm not sure we did him any favors with the AD he was paired with, and that's not the... Yeah, well, I, you know, we, we figured I out mean, in a hurry, absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? Right. So, you know, the shift that Cross had to deal with from, from Moose to, to Trap was just, I mean, it was like a 180-degree shift. Yeah. And so, you know, the challenge is, so all of these things were sort of happening behind the background. The whole thought process is, well... You know, Scott's going to come back and win all the games, and he'll effectively be the AD and also the football coach and all these other things. And then that doesn't go well. And then it becomes abundantly clear that there needs to be someone actually running the department, um, you know, that's like full goal and ready to do it for five or ten years. And so Moose is paid to leave. Trev is brought in. And in the two and a half years that Trev was there, I think he, I think he really did run the department. Like it was, it was firmly yep. run. Yeah. Uh, but but now that leads us where we are now of that, like, hey, everybody's, you know, he became a guy that was in the middle. You know, there's stories out there about, you know, whatever he did at UNO, there's this, there's that. And I think it just becomes, you know, now they need to get a structure where where the AD is just the AD and not the person that's, you know, having to try to figure out issues that that are honestly beyond the role that they that they are that they're given. We're talking with Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. You know, you, you kind of mentioned this role that we kind of thrust upon Scott Frost, that he wasn't necessarily 
capable or or ready to take on are we kind of asking matt rule to do the same thing right now in the interim with no ad no president way more experience though yeah yeah he's more yeah. qualified and, for it and, but, 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 but that's but, what we're and, asking right. to do right I, yeah i wrote last week he's the face of the athletic department yep and I, I, you know i suppose there's somebody they could hire that would that would supersede that and by i somebody i'm thinking somebody who would be willing to make as shocking a move as Trev Alberts just made. And You're talking like Greg Bird. That is. So, yeah, so it'd yeah. be like a Greg Bird. If you don't, if you don't want, yeah, it, it's, like it'd have to be that type of. It hire. has to be a sitting, well-respected athletic director. And handle is a bad word, Sam. It's not like you have to handle Coach Rule, but when you have really bright, higher-level thinkers, they need to they need to be challenged in a healthy manner to keep them sharp. Right. Yeah. Right. For sure. And so I, you know, I think he becomes in many ways the leader. Now he has to do, he, he needs, he needs, a, he needs psycho, he needs emotional and psychological peers though. Cause if he yeah. gets those, he could, he could really be brilliant. I mean, he's already extremely right. smart, but like, right. Give him a peer that he can bounce ideas off to to cast visions, then go make it happen. Like you're in his wheelhouse. Yeah, I think that would be great if they're able to find that person. Um, I, what he what he doesn't have to do is try to have answers for things that that uh, that are outside of what he needs to figure out. So, like I, you know, he he'll have to. Um, I think when he was at Baylor, he, he did have to sort of be a, a moral leader there based on what had happened before he got there. Um, and then I think he gets to Carolina and that was a whole mess. And, you know, he, I think he probably worked for somebody there that wasn't very helpful in some circumstances. Uh, and so now, you know, you, he's probably going to be sort of a, a vocal leader. Uh, simultaneously, he has to, you know, do his job and they, and they have to hire somebody to support him. Um, it, and it's possible that success will help Fred Weber. I It could be more of that. I think he is pretty reserved in some ways, like publicly. And so I don't know if getting the NCAA tournament and winning a game or two in Memphis uh, changes what Weber thinks he can he can step into as a leader in that department. L L listening to his real personality the come out the last couple of months, Sam, is, is beautiful. Like, he's a pretty cool coach. And I think he's... Like we're seeing the full Coach Hoiberg experience, right? Right. He's, I think so. There's a lot in there. There is. I I think um, there is a lot in there. He's he's a he's a great guy. It, 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 seriously, like in terms of a person and all that, and the humor that he has and all those things. I I found it striking. He said last night, you know, when when the reveal was done, that he had to kind of go to a different place in his house and just reflect on that that's cool so like man. they they watched it at his house mm -hmm. and then and i think one of the reasons they probably did that is so that like when that happened there was a moment he had to himself and you can't have that when you're doing a watch party you know <laughs> at, at the arena and so i think that was notable that like this is a person i think who feels very deeply about making this place better um, and it's probably starting to come into that and is finally seeing some of the success come to fruition and i'm sure he feels feels great about that but but yeah i mean matt rule is going to be you know he'll speak today everybody's going to want to know what he thinks about trev i'm sure he'll have something thoughtful to say and and uh and then and then it becomes about basketball for the rest of the week and the football team can can have their spring camp and and i'm sure it'll it'll be fine and the one thing about football that's interesting and we'll i'm sure we'll talk about this next week it you don't have to ask a lot of like get to know you questions. People kind of know who this team's going to be from a culture standpoint. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. question the question is going to be one specific position, and and he can't he will not have answers to that question today because he doesn't know. Nobody really knows until they play a football game against another team. You might learn a little in the spring game, but nobody really knows until they play UTEP exactly what they have at that position. Um, because they may not have all their guys yet. It, it, they may go through spring and say, okay, yeah, we need to go out and get a guy. We just don't know yet. And that's that's the key to this team because this team has so many other components in place. They got to get better at that position. And you just don't know how good you're going to be quite yet before camp starts. Mm. Sam, you know, I uh, want to get to some basketball here at the end of this interview. I know we spent a lot of time 
talking about a guy that doesn't work here anymore. But um, uh, Ravi, Ravi's not, but he's not mad. I'm, t- I'm I, he's not mad, Sam. Oh no, I'm super <laughs> mad and I'm super petty and. I, He's uh, persona non grata to me here in the state of Nebraska. Yeah. Um, Sam, how did you like the eight nine draw? For obviously, you got Texas A and M, so we'll leave the Trev part out of this. But in terms of the actual basketball teams, how do you like that eight nine draw for Nebraska? I know I thought they could maybe creep up to a seven. Looks like they were closer to that than the ten that a lot of people had them before the Big Ten tournament. How do you like that matchup for the Huskers? Oh, it's fine. I think they could have been a seven. Um, but you know, then you're then you're leaning into where are you putting them as a seven? Are you gonna put them in Omaha? Are you really gonna do that to an Iowa State team that could have been a one? Um they were further from a one than I thought though. That they weren't that close. They were not. Um, you know, so I think uh you're starting to get into weird conversations where I think it would have been, I mean, truly manifestly unfair. Iowa State to to force them to play in a road environment uh, that just wouldn't have been fair at all. And so, um, you know, they go as an eight. They're playing a team that is an outlier in college basketball. They don't shoot the three at all. Uh, they're terrible shooting the three. They're like twenty eight percent, and they just they just rebound the hell out of it. So they they rebound and they get second chance points and and muscle you inside. They're yeah. the kind of team that Nebraska has struggled with this year. Uh, doesn't mean Nebraska can't win. You know, so much of the NCAA tournament uh, comes down to, you know, going and making some shots in the first 15 minutes of the game and then, you know, defense. And if Nebraska defends and, and they make some shots early, um, that Texas A&M is not going to, you know, overcome a 17-point deficit. You got to try to put this team in a hole early. And if you do that, then they're going to have a hard time getting out of it. So Nebraska has to start fast, and you know we'll see what happens. And then in the second round, you know you play a team that that uh, has been very good all season long, but just had a horrible game against Iowa State and does struggle to score. Houston a couple of years ago they almost lost to Rutgers in the second round. That Rutgers team that mm-hmm. that you know was very slow possession wise. If Nebraska can slow a game down against Houston uh, and kind of play possession to possession, they they, you never know. Houston will not have a bunch of fans in Memphis. They don't travel. They're not that strong of a fan base. Nebraska will have more fans in the arena if they beat Texas A&M to play Houston. So you know it's it's there's it's not the worst draw of all time. Uh, it, you know we'll 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 see what happens. And uh, yeah, they got a chance to win. That's all you can ask for. Sam, if you'll do the editing for me, because you know I can't write. Um... <laughs> You can send me to Corvallis on like a independent contractor deal. I'll go. I'll go watch women and UNLV. Is that in the budget? They're playing. They're <laughs> playing Texas A&M. Well, I meant up to Corvallis, not not yeah. UNLV, but I, up to Corvallis to to watch yeah. that one. I got my get my. Local yeah, teams we got Brent up. Wagner going out there. Brent will do a great job. Oh, yeah, tell him. Hey, game. tell him it's not personal. I'm not trying to muscle in on his job. I just know <laughs> Corvallis isn't a, isn't a fun place to try to get to. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not easy. It's not uh, quite Penn State, but it's <laughs> not easy. Not quite. Honestly, not quite Eugene. Eugene's further away than Corvallis. Yeah, right? That place so sucks. You got to fly to Portland <laughs> and then go down to Eugene. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens with right. them. I, you know, I think they've got a chance to win their first game and do not be stunned if the team that's also in that region, Oregon State, struggles to beat the 14th seed. 14th seed is really good, no, no. better than most 14th seed. And others. can score. Yep. That's Sam McHugh and Omaha World Herald. We'll be back with more Herd Sports Radio. We will be back. We'll be back.
we will be back. We will be back. We will be back. We will be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. We're halfway through the show here on Hurt at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. And we are brought to you by our friends at the Omaha Storm Chasers. They got a great win on Saturday against the Orlando Valkyries here at the CHI Health Center. And they will be back in action a week from Thursday. There's another thing going on this weekend at the CHI Health Center. Oh, yeah, yeah the, there's NCAA basketball the, tournament. The turnaround. I, um, I saw BMAC on TV this morning. McCarvel. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, so you can get tickets. You've got a little about a week and a half before the next home match for the Supernovas. Go to supernovas.com for schedule, tickets, merch, anything you can think of at supernovas.com. I think he said Storm Chasers. They're ashamed we can just get that edited. Did I say Storm Chasers? Probably. Supernova. I don't think I think that said Supernovas. I don't know. Let's go take it to. Replay. We like all of our uh, our local oh. professional teams. We we are a big fan. So I everybody's said. just a little bit off today. I mean, I was no, just you. <laughs> and I don't know if he was really off. I could have not heard that correctly. And but we know for sure Shane is. Yeah, <laughs> but nice, nice says nice says he can't see. What that had to do with playing bed music, I have no idea. I mean, it sounds like he's making excuses like Trev is. That's fine. That was so. I'm not on Twitter doing it. I'm not on Twitter. I, that was a fantastic. No, really good stuff from Sam. From Sam, man. I would go. 
because there there's a lot in there. I, I do. I'm going to have to go back and listen because there's stuff I'm sure I didn't catch. Yeah, it's deep. Yeah, and, and uh, I do wonder one thing though. I I shouldn't allow myself to go back and 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 reminisce. No, let's do it. But I wonder what would have happened if Coach Frost would have gotten the job with really strong leadership leadership mm-hmm. in place, not just from the athletic director, but Top down. Top down. Because as as I've tried to hint to getting in the weeds here the last, remember my big solution? It's say it out loud, mm-hmm. redefine, front door. Put your mission statement out there. Mi- because I, I'm telling you. You want everybody on the same page. I, I'm telling you. Robbie, and the only way to do that is do it publicly. N- Nebraska is in a unique situation. And I don't even know if it's always unique good. It's unique good because of the way that the mm-hmm. athletic department can operate free of any other purse strings. Mm-hmm. But when your enrollment is down and you're facing fiscal, bu- fiscal budget crunches, mm-hmm. it's hard for your president and your athletic director to be answering questions about the academics world when all this other money uh-huh. is going to these other funds. Don't don't undersell that. Mm-hmm. Go 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 back to the other process. The let the chancellor and AD do their thing. Let let the president pres. Yes, let them okay? be the president of the university. If if, if if he or she wants to be involved in athletics in some way, share or form, it's secondary, mm-hmm. not necessary. Then you don't have to worry about going to your constituents and saying, "Well, how do you have the?" Because it. it <laughs> How do you have the money for this, but not for this? Right. Right. Yeah. Like let, me, the, let me tell you why. Can I tell you why? Sure. Because I did a little research on this. Okay. Because I made the statement last week. And again, I wanted to get it right. And I was hoping that I was also right. But so I did some research. I made the statement last week that athletics almost across the board, if you're successful, raises your enrollment and things like that. They help the academic side. I was in complete agreement. And I've got numbers for you. Okay, because it is true to the tune of almost 20 percent across the board. We're not just talking about these national sensations or like an FGCU, which grabbed the country by storm. We're not just talking about the Alabamas of the world that are dominant and winning national championships. This is across the board going from a mediocre to good. And I'm not going to they lay that out in the study, but going from a mediocre to good football I li- program I like where you're going or athletics program talk to me leads to application increases of almost 20 percent to attain the same level of gain you would have to lower tuition by four percent which nobody's doing or you would have to dramatically invest in higher quality faculty that's that's what I'm talking about. And it even has a name. It's called the Flutie effect back yeah. from Boston College. Yeah. This is a real thing. This is not just a Ravi made up anecdotal thing. This is a real thing. That's a study that was published by a Texas professor in the Harvard Business Review. That is a real thing. Mm-hmm. So I get the academia types kind of wringing their hands and being like, ah, oh, but it's, a, it's an institution of higher learning. Yes. And you have the best recruiting tool on the planet next door. It's called Nebraska football. You get that recruiting tool hitting on all cylinders. I guarantee you a lot of that other stuff will take care of itself. Did you hear you you heard Trev or Trev? You heard Sam reference Hank Bounds being Mm -hmm. at football practices and stuff. I remember we had a spring practice. And I think he and I took a picture. I may have put it on then the artist formerly known as Twitter then. Just because I had a lot of respect for him. And Mm -hmm. I'd seen him like two a couple practices in a row in the spring. And I asked him, like, what's his affinity? Because he's all he was always going around watching, you know, he'd go to volleyball and he'd watch these practices. And he said, you know, I think it would be in our best interest if we figure out what happens out here on the competitive playing field in athletics Mm -hmm. where you're around competitive high end people and not somehow want to make that representative of what we're doing on campus to attract our students. We need to be in the business of competing. Mm -hmm. And I sat back for a second. I'm like, and I said real time. I don't know why that sounded so novel, because it isn't. Mm -mm. 
Not very many people say it out loud. But he said it out loud. That's and thing. I was like, huh. Not but very then, many and then a couple years loud. removed, right, I get these other st- statements that I like. You know, DJ would always tell – we always talk about simple versus easy, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's easy to understand. It's not always that simple to execute, to, to execute yep. right? And I, I watch what happens at the high school level, right? Booming enrollment often sur- comes with – what's going on in with ac- or athletics, mm-hmm. right? It just, that's how it works. Just, it just does. And athletics draws people in. So, but the thing about Nebraska, mm-hmm. and I said this kind of in passing last week and, and you called it a rant. It wasn't really a rant, <laughs> but if you, there has to be some hard conversation sitting at the table where you're like, okay, listen, Prez, I know you want this job. We want you to have this job. This is where, because we keep making cuts, right? Because the good thing about, one of the good things about, and people rolled their eyes, but I'm not as down on on the governor in some areas as some other people are, right? I'm willing to give any anything a chance. And I think he wants, and I think he wants success for the university, mm-hmm. right? And I'm not getting into what's happening in the rest of the state because I'm only talking about the university. Sure. So don't hear me saying, well, what about the rest of the state? It's not just about athletics because I keep hearing that, right? You. So, But when the governor is involved, see, when you have state budgets, mm-hmm. fiscal budgets. I worked in the Title I department at, for in the public school sector. Mm-hmm. And the first, when the state gets cuts, do you know one of the first line items that gets hammered? when you can't meet budget is education Mm -hmm. always governor Heineman was notorious for this Mm -hmm. former governor Heineman. And we would see the, the funds decrease right year after year after year. And it's like, well, we want people to be smart. We just don't really, we don't, we don't don't really want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're going to, we're going to have all these workarounds. So when the governor brings some, this like call to action, and it's not just, I know some of the verbiage people gravitated towards Board of Regents, Board of Regents. But what happens is with the presidential search, mm-hmm. you have to have these conversations about what the expectation level is in the academics world with a severe budget and student shortfall versus are we going to be okay with allowing the athletics department to kind of operate independently? It doesn't have to be rogue, mm-hmm. right? But what is one of the reasons that Trev wanted to work directly with Ted Carter? Well, you don't have to go through as much red tape. Mm-hmm. There's, you, Limits the bureaucracy, right? You can just get things done quicker. Mm-hmm. Now, the downside of that is, hey, Prez, oh, what's going on with the rest of the stuff that you're supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. Hey, pretty heavy-handed over here. Right? Like, are we good with the optics? And I always say, I always laugh at the word optics because optics is a word that people use when they don't have enough information. Oh, man, the optics are bad. Well, you maybe not know enough. You don't know enough. Sure. I know how it looks on the outside. So if you're at the if you're at the table and you're t- you're talking with one another about the vision, the mission statement and the well-defined roles, it holds everybody accountable. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're operating in the know, which most of the time, I think that's how high functioning adults want to know. They don't want to guess. No. But you, you do have to reconcile some things in your head when you step on this campus because it is it is uniquely different. Yeah, I think you're right. People don't want to guess. But a lot of times, if you don't have kind of the emotional maturity to deal with it, you don't like what you hear either when people give you the information. Well, so even not at that level? Nah, I guess people are people. You're people right. People are people. Coming up next, we'll wrap up hour number two here on Hernet Sports Radio. We will be back.
will be back. We will be back. We will be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Wrap it up hour number two here on Hurt at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as well. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. Uh, getting into a lot of stuff here, mostly Trev, surprise, surprise. Uh, some basketball as well, though. But before we get... Before the the whole show gets away from us, uh, gonna take some of that mattress Mac money and go to Memphis. Uh no, he's offering package deals for Houston. No, I'm not going to. I uh, thought, that's one thing I did kind of disagree with Sam about. That thing will be well attended by. This, there's a lot of. Teams I saw from you make Texas. a face. I thought you. Yeah, because I. Are I, you guys going? They'll go. They'll go. Yeah, I um. I don't know. Now, they may fight over competing barbecue, Texas style versus Memphis, but do you, um, do you know all the differences between barbecue? Like which regions the, for, do what for the most part? So what's Texas known for? Uh, so that's like mesquite, like smoked. Yeah, like um, like not so much flavor. saucy, but yeah, the 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 mesquite. Like how they actually cook it, not the yeah. sauce. And then you know Memphis, it not uh, a little sweeter. Okay. That's like your traditional sweet barbecue? Yeah, like, and you see it on the labels, right? Mm -hmm. Like different types of barbecue sauce. And Carolina has like the mustard? Yeah, the vinegary, the lighter. Okay. Like and yellow? if I was going to do any sauce, I'd be weird because Charlotte is a beautiful city, but I'd be way over in the Carolinas. I like the Carolina gold. I like that type of sauce, yeah. even though I don't like vinegar. If you get a good one that you can't really taste the vinegar in it. So I found myself using vinegar a lot more now. Oof, I hate vinegar. I clean my chicken with it. 
I drink it. Um, and it's reeks. Yeah. I made the boys a concoction yesterday morning and it's like Micah plugged his nose. I was like, grow up, buddy. It's good for you. <laughs> um, but anyway, like I vinegar is one of the more is pretty it's a versatile substance. Pungent. I don't like it. No, I hate the smell. Um, but in those mustard based sauces, like my buddy Corey, uh, that has the unbelievable catering cooking business does a does a vinegar sauce so what's kc barbecue then i don't know i'm not that i always because remember i'm not i don't like sauce i always thought kc was maybe I, like I the think, sweeter I think, barbecue I think sauce is pretty overrated yeah i like a good i like a good barbecue sauce do you yeah i mean I it's like, got its place i don't like my food wet <laughs> that thing wet <laughs> yeah Shannon Sharp, which, by the way, I sh I wish I could have made some money pre that wet. predicting that decline. Well, yeah, it's a hard. Uh, a I was hard, I was about a week ahead. That's a hard market to short, right there. You know, you, I don't know if you've seen the big short. You got to kind of create your own markets, maybe do some swaps here. It's a it's a whole thing. Um, yeah. I don't, and I don't know who's taking that action on on Shannon Sharp, kind of having his uh having a little moment. Club club Shay Shay. Um, I'll take it. No, I wanted to get to. Uh, I wanted to get to your Pittsburgh uh, Pittsburgh Steelers making a little quarter, <laughs> making a little FK. quarterback room. People, people making me mad. Why are people making you mad about the Steelers? It's just dumb low ball takes. Like what? Like what are you guys doing? I well, thought it was a good move. Making fools well, out not 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 spending very much money to better the quarterback room. Well, and giving yourself a couple of bites at the apple, right? Yeah. Like uh, you're you're paying you're paying Russ. 1.2 something like that I, like i said in any other real world it would be great business 100 percent. fairly good return on a very low investment that's the american dream fairly good opportunity for return yeah. we don't know what we'll get right yeah. but you're giving yourself Did a I chance. Say chance i didn't think so but i i might have missed okay, it well it's implied okay but i like i do like i do like you making me make sure because you'll be the type of dude that in eight months when they're the, <laughs> <laughs> There'll be six and eight and with three weeks to go. And you're like, yeah, you said this is going to create a great opportunity. Oh, I see. And I'll have to go back and say, no, I said the chance. It creates a great opportunity. It doesn't guarantee return on investment. No, as but, almost but, nothing but, does. But, but very low risk. Yes. And it's a low risk, high reward proposition. At the end of the day, you can send me your sack stats, your interception stats. Uh, I like Justin Fields. Um, Pittsburgh's quarterback room is better than it was last year yeah yeah and and if you give me and a cost and if you give me a tyler boyd and or a mike williams mm -hmm. who by the way is in pittsburgh this week oh who knows i feel pretty good about that you're you're it's literally costing pittsburgh like Penny, one million dollars pennies on the dollar and a sixth worst case scenario fourth round draft pick because yeah. it's conditional for justin fields i couldn't believe they got him for that yeah. like just, i couldn't believe it just wait Right. I, and and I, they're patient. It, they're normally they're not even a splashy free agency team. And they've had a heck of a free agency run here. I wanted the 49ers to spend a third on him just to have him in the room. Yeah. Like I would have taken that 100 percent in a place where I wanted him in the first place over Trey Lance. You don't have to be the starter right away. How about how they did Kenny Pickett, though? Yeah, that was cold blooded. Yeah, don't be a don't be a grumble bug. That was cold blood. Don't be a grumble bug. Because not only did you get shipped, mm -hmm. at least they kept you in the state. But you're um, playing behind a guy you... that they're playing at, paying a ton of money to. Yeah, you're not playing. You're just not playing. <laughs> so it's like, ooh, careful. Yeah, it's a um, it's an interesting situation. I thought I thought the Steelers did well. I thought it was a good move for them. I I've always had a soft spot for for Justin Fields. I think it's a I think he's been in a terrible situation. But now the Bears have cleared the way to uh, go after, I guess, Caleb Williams. Yeah, it's getting a lot of pushback. Or Wait, trade the, out of that spot and go the, get the, somebody else. The closer this thing gets to the draft, the more smoke. About Caleb Williams? Just the quarterbacks in general. Yeah. I just saw two more mock drafts the other day that now had May back slotted at second. But people do love Daniels. Yeah, they do. Uh, like, And his, his pro day, and he's before – Mm -hmm. May. Mm -hmm. So Daniels is the 27th. May is the 28th. Yeah. And and uh, Caleb is the 20th. It's going to be interesting because I the mocks we saw last week of Drake May at like post 10 
didn't make any sense to me. Depends on what you do with McCarthy, right? Even you can, you can move McCarthy to six still. And leave well, May there's only so many teams, so you're thinking four, right? Who's going to be the fourth if you're going to slide right. away and make a move, right? Because then there's Bo, there's Bo Nix coming. Penix is yeah. either back half of the first round or I don't second know. round. I don't know what people are doing with Bo Nix. I well, don't. He's making a move. That's fine. I. That's. It's. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words with the Bo Nick stuff. Do you know the one place on the like before this weekend where Fields landed? Do you know where I felt like they were gonna make a a, a little low key move? Who? Where? I I thought maybe the Giants. Yeah, so that's a with, team with Lock Fields and whatever you're gonna do with. That's a team that people are looking at at Daniel six Jones as making the, a move as the fourth either. They take a quarterback at six. I can't see McCarthy going at six. But Too he high would, or but wrong he would spot? be the I think it's the I think it's the wrong spot. For the Giants? Yeah. So I think there there's the most of the mocks either have the Giants taking a quarterback there, depending on who's available, or having somebody trade into that six spot. That six spot seems to be the place that people maybe, are looking at. Maybe the Raiders to trade into the Vikings. I've seen get traded up to six a lot. Um, Vikings have their own issues, though, yeah. Be because even though you're having a good free agency deal, like what are you going to pay Justin Jefferson if you can't really get him the ball the way that you need to for two years, maybe? Yeah, at least one, right? Because I, I think Sam Darnold's the perceived starter there for yeah. now. Yeah. And I mean, maybe he's OK. I don't know. But we, we've seen a decent amount of of evidence to say that he's probably not that guy. Maybe he has a late career renaissance. Uh, the other team, uh, Denver. People have looked at Denver trading up to six. Yeah. Sean Payton, the quarterback whisperer. Allegedly. Uh, except it was sweet nothings that he was whispering. <laughs> he was, to, to Russell the love muscle. He was. Well, what was he whisper whispering to Drew Brees all those years? Do good things, Drew. Throw for 5,000 yards and Drew don't do good, anything in the playoffs? Drew, Drew good, do good things. I'm basically. I'm, gl I'm glad the Dolphins didn't take you because of your shoulder. I'm basically do, McCarthy do, with better PR. Yeah, true. Do good things. <laughs> Love that the Chargers let you go. I know you were rumored to go to Miami. He's doing Ooh. some good things. Thank you for coming don't, to New Orleans. Don't worry, Nick Saban got Dante Culpepper instead. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that played out. How fast did he disappear? Saban. DC. Oh, really fast. Isn't that something? It, he is one of the, man, go back and look at his. Because he was like the best quarterback in the league one year. Yeah, he, Almost pretty close to it. Well, did, he had a two-year run where it was just like they're scoring at will. It was bonkers. With with Moss and, and Carter. The quarterback is such a crap shoot. It so, really kind of is. Like that's, you know, we, we have all these, and, and I have strong opinions about it too, but we have all these strong takes at the draft. And, I mean, nobody really knows. I mean, Caleb Williams, for all the, you know, like, oh, what's his personality like? Is he a little too enigmatic? Whatever. He Maybe he's awesome. I have no idea. Yeah. Who did I listen to on Sirius? Was it uh, Joe Klatt? Klatt loves Caleb Williams. Really? Yeah. Klatt's kind of hard on quarterbacks. It's kind of kind of hmm. hard on quarterbacks. Yeah. But I, I just want... Get the draft over because I'm gonna I'm gonna check out from the NFL here starting on Thursday, unless Boyd or makes it official and and Mike Williams. You mean during the NCAA tournament? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, either let's let's make some moves before Thursday. Yeah, let's have like we need to have like nice little moratorium. You know, we have dead periods in in uh, college football recruiting. <laughs> we need an NFL moratorium during the NCAA tournament, which they're not going to do that because you know the NFL wants to rule the world, but. Just saying. Give, to, give me a little break here. What did you think the toughest region was for you? Ooh, that's a good question. A lot of people were so a lot of people were talking about how much they like Creighton's draw. And uh we can get to that here in a minute because we're gonna talk to Nick Baugh. And I don't think they have a terrible draw. Toughest region, though. I might I'm gonna have to look at that. I haven't really looked at the bracket with that in mind yet. Yeah, I don't no, at first South, glance, I, I didn't look at one that I was like, oh, that's a killer. You know, I, I bad mouth South Carolina. Yeah. Now they get a chance to make amends, too. I should stop talking about the teams that have a chance to play against the local teams. Yeah, stop doing that. But Quit jinxing it. I don't well, like it. How's South Carolina going to score? That's a good question. That's a constant <laughs> question. We'll ask Nick Bach coming up next year on Herd Sports Radio. We 
we will be back. We will be back. We will be back. We will be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Now, college basketball analyst for FS1, host of the Nick Ba podcast, and former Creighton and Kansas basketball guard, Nick Ba. Man down, man down. Nick I open up some salsa, it explodes all over my chest. Nick, 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 Bob. Meet me at the rim. Here is Old Dominion. Nick Bob. Kicking off hour number three here on Herd Out Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're also on KFOR in Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. 
Joining us now is one Nick Ba, Fox Sports College analyst. Nick, how are you this morning? I'm great. Best time of year. Of course I'm great. Hopped out of bed like it was Christmas morning, man. This is, uh, <laughs> this is awesome. Got a lot of film to, to watch, a lot of things to, to dive into, but yeah, I'm doing awesome. All right. So if we're in the gift giving mood and you're under, you're checking under the tree, man, who, who do you think got kind of one of the better gifts, right? Whether it's where they were seated, whether it's their draw, it's Christmas morning for basketball folks, man. Who got a gift? You know, I, you know, I think kind of got a bit of a gift. Who? Kentucky. I look at the bottom half with Oakland. They're going to get a hurt Florida team potentially that they're that they're familiar with, and who knows what happens with Marquette and, and Western Kentucky down there. Yeah, great call. That I was Kentucky was one that came to mind just because like you could argue that the the health status of Tyler Kolick is one of the bigger storylines for the entire NCAA tournament. Like you tell me, Tyler Kolick is is close to one hundred percent. I think that's a team that's got a got a pretty decent path to, to square off against Houston for a chance to go to a Final Four. Uh, but like you mentioned, Florida, big injury yesterday. That was gross. Brutal. Marquette, uh, who, who knows how Kolek's going to feel, hasn't played in a couple of weeks. I, I also – I think Arizona's got a decent path. I, I'll be honest with you, and I'm sorry, Damon, you're a North Carolina lover – <laughs> I don't, there, there isn't really any team in the West that I'm like, man, I love that team. Yeah, you you could you could make the case, and I would listen if you told me that the West has the weakest of the top four seeds. That's the, what I think. The weakest I mean, one, the weakest two, the weakest three, the weakest four. I, I that's exactly how how I see it. Now I'm not saying there aren't dangerous, capable teams in that in that region. In fact, I think the I think that 6-11 game between Clemson and New Mexico is going to be a hell of a game and either of those teams could could make a run. I've seen I've seen New Mexico 3 times, guys. They are when it's right, it's really right, but man, they are incredibly undisciplined at times. Um when when Jalen when the shots are going, Jalen House oh, yeah. is about as fun of a player to watch as you can imagine, but he also like Dude is going down swinging. Yep. He, like he in, in th- this weekend, he's either going to put thirty up in multiple games, or homeboy is going to be like three for thirty-four. And, get, <laughs> and, and I don't think Clemson is that good. I I've been kind of on them the last two weeks, so they got it. I could see why I could see why New Mexico's favored. Yes, I I, I that's a game that I, I think New Mexico is going to win that game. But I, I throw in that caveat of like. New Mexico is also a little crazy. Okay, like they, they can they can have some moments where you're like, "Whoa, slow down!" But like their three guards, Jamal Masper Jr., Jalen House, Donovan Dent, like those three guys are really good players. And guards matter this time of year. I like them. Um, but yeah, it's, so I'd say I, even though I don't love that Arizona team, um, uh, you know Dayton, I thought their resume was a little light. Uh, Nevada. I think of all the Mountain West teams, I, I was maybe the most lukewarm on them. Uh, I think Arizona's got a decent path, and it's and then you look at the west of the the rest of the West region, and it's not great. But you're totally right, Damon. Uh, uh, Kentucky, I think, got a got an interesting path as well. Um, they're another team that, when it's right, it's amazing. I mean, you could make an argument, and I think it's an easy one to make that raw talent, just nothing more than just raw talent. Kentucky's potentially got the most talented team in the NCAA tournament. Uh, this just can they guard anybody will will remain to be seen. We're talking with Nick Baugh, Fox Sports basketball analyst. Uh, Nick, you know, we like to call those New Mexico teams high variants. That's what we're yeah. talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I wanted to ask you about uh, Creighton's draw. Obviously, yep. get Akron in the first round. How do you look at that Midwest region in general? Because I, I think I think Creighton fans, and, and probably rightfully so, are kind of looking at, okay, how, how do we get back to maybe a lead eight? How do we get back to an opportunity to go to the Final Four again? How do you look at their path to that, uh, to that regional final as, as doable for them? Well, uh, very manageable. Uh, I, I will say I'm not so sure that their toughest game wouldn't be their Sweet 16 game. I think, I think Tennessee is maybe the best team in that region. Mm. Um I think Creighton would match up with Purdue really well. 
And I, who doesn't want to see Zach Eady and Kalkbrenner? Right. I mean, <laughs> I want to see it so bad. Like, yeah. picture first possession of the game. Purdue runs there a little high-low. It goes into Edie, and Big Cock is right there. Let's go. Let's see what happens here. You know, I'm, I'm telling you though, you if Utah Utah State gets past TCU, Utah State will give. It's that is not a good matchup. For hey, people. hey, and Damon, I saw. Uh, so Utah State's big guy, great awesome board. <laughs> He was the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. I did the Big Sky Championship game last year when he was playing Montana State one with Danny Sprinkle and those guys. So I saw Darius Brown, their guard, and Great Osibor. And I left that game being like, those two dudes can play anywhere. So mm -hmm. I'm not that surprised to see them go to Utah State with Danny Sprinkle and have their success. I say all that to say you're right on in that I think a great, great Osibor versus Zach Eady would be very, very <laughs> interesting. Yeah, um, Purdue, Purdue didn't. They didn't get any favors there. That if Utah State gets past TCU, they're a much better matchup for Purdue. That that that's uh, I got my eye on that one because everybody kind of has Purdue penciled in. I, I don't know, man. Utah State is tough. Yeah, they are. And 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 listen, TCU played nobody in the non-con, but they were. A I had them against Georgetown. They got dudes. They're deep. They're athletic. Um, but but to circle it back to Creighton. Uh, I, you know, I mean, Kansas, who knows what Kansas is going to be like, too. Kansas is a big, you know, we talk about Tyler Kolick and his health status. You could argue that also mm -hmm. Kevin McCuller Jr. And, and Hunter Dickinson and how they are, are an enormous variable for what this NCAA tournament is going to look like. Because if you tell me can, if Kansas has a hunter, healthy Hunter Dickinson and a healthy Kevin McCuller, I think Kansas could, is is going to be a major factor in, the, in this thing. But they have been just leaking here for a, a couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens with them. With Creighton, you know, with Akron, there. I'm not sure how much you guys have dove into them. Yeah. They're, you know, three of their five starters were in the NCAA tournament two years ago. So they got experience. I think that matters this time of year. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Their best player is their six foot seven five man, Enrique Freeman, who is four time MAC All Defensive Team. He was the MAC Defensive Player of the Year and the MAC Player of the Year this year. And he's more, he can step out and shoot it a little bit. But I think this is where having Kalk Brenner is huge. That I just, I, I watching some film last night, I'm looking at him going to work in the post. And it's just going to be, I think, challenging for him to score with his back to the basket over Ryan Kalk Brenner. Uh, so, but, but this team is experienced uh, and, and, you know, they've been there. They're older as well. And then Oregon, South Carolina, of course, like my heart is like when I saw Oregon, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> hey, that was that's a heck of a call you gave us. Was that last week or two weeks two ago? Two weeks ago when you, you're like, hey, don't be Dana. surprised. I mean, this is what Dana does. I'm telling you, her... I don't know what it is. I don't I can't even necessarily. He he for some there's something about his personality that really lends itself. You know, I'm sure, Damon, you get it. So do you, Ravi, of like coaching from a certain position mm -hmm. like He's really good when you go to a conference tournament and it is like survive or it's over. Quick turnaround, yeah. Like he's good at that. He, he's good at getting every – because he's so damn intense. He's good at getting you to feel like every little – like I think I had like three rebounds in the Valley Finals, and I pulled those rebounds down like I was <laughs> in it rock no, it was <laughs> You know, I pulled those things down, outletted it to fuck, and when I came off the floor – Dan, you know, punches me in the chest and is like, "Here we go, Ba! You don't know boards, you know." And like, and, and like that to win a conference tournament, like every little when you're when you're playing for your life, every little thing adds up. So Oregon's unique; uh, they're hot. They'll they play some matchup zone. I'm sure you guys saw Dante and Dante and Follies. Just whoa, my God, is he a, a unique player? And then South Carolina will slow the game down, which which. Is always uh, makes makes for an interesting matchup too. I don't love the way they shoot it, man. They no. are they are, <laughs> boy, they are they are a hard hard watch. I couldn't, but so there's two sixes that that I was surprised. South Carolina's one, and I still can't believe Clemson's a six. But going back to Kansas, they got the weakest five of the bunch too in Gonzaga potentially. If Gonzaga beats McNeese 
State because McNeese State can score. How is Gonzaga a five? Like it's it's name recognition, right? Like what is what are we doing here? So, so I, I, it's I, like I, a bubble team. I like the Kansas thing with with health because that that path is not like oh boy until okay, maybe you, you know I mean, what I mean. You you again. You tell me Kansas is healthy. I think Kansas has a great shot to be in that regional final. Well, okay. their their starting five is as good as almost anyone. Yes, I mean if they. Yeah. I mean, really, they're and and they're really they're four. Like if basketball was played four on four, Kansas <laughs> is a one seed, you know. But uh, Furphy is good with the other guys, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I think. Uh, but but to your point, I was I was very surprised Gonzaga was a five. I I, I, I kind of they went to the to the to the to the West Coast Conference tournament, and I was kind of like, D- they don't need to win this, do they? Like that <laughs> that crap. They're, like, oh, they're, they're fortunate they beat Kentucky. I kind of. <laughs> I, I kind of thought they needed to win it a little no. bit. Yes. I, I mean, the, the committee, and listen, it's easy to sit here and every year everybody's like, the committee, I mean, what are they doing? But this year in particular, it really was, there were a lot of puzzling things, Gonzaga being one of them. Uh, you know, even I was surprised to see New Mexico. I thought New Mexico, when, got, when New Mexico got to the Mountain West Championship, I thought, oh, they're in. Oh, no, clearly they needed to win that game. But I also think it was unprecedented with all the, you know, with with Duquesne and NC State and Oregon and UAB. It was it was fairly unprecedented in, in the amount of bid thieves that happened in conference tournaments. Uh, but yeah, I, Gonzaga, uh, got, they're gonna have their hands full with McNeese, and then Sanford presses too. Damon, Sanford will press, which will make it interesting to see how uh, how KU and McCuller and those guys are 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 doing. But yeah, I I. I uh, the committee was was head scratching to say the least. Yeah. So and I so there's two things in there that I'm glad we got. You number one, I told Ravi early. I said we worry too much about the last four to not get in. The bigger problem was the seating, right? We 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 don't spend enough time talking about how teams are seated. We always talk about how they aren't there because this was arguably the most head scratching year. And I'll say this because you're the perfect guy to answer. Because and along those lines, I said one of the teams I think is grossly underseated is Boise State. When you yeah. look at when you look at, I watched them probably four or five times, and I think ten. How is Boise a ten? Like number one, you can speak to Boise a little, and like how important in this one do you think the seeding will actually turn out, especially anything after like four on down? I mean, that, that's, I mean, I think you talk to any coach and it, it, I think some people roll their eyes and they think it's like, a, a, you know, a cliche or an excuse or whatever, but honestly, your, 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 your matchup is everything. Your path is everything. It's not necessarily about the, the, the seating, but who is there, but, but the reason that makes a difference is because of different teams getting seated in different spots. I mean, Boise State's a top 30 defense. They're, they're another group that's experienced Tyson Dagenhart is a baller and he's a matchup problem at, at six foot eight and he can step out and shoot it. He can post, he can drive it. Um, I was surprised to see Boise state. I mean, clearly the committee wasn't as into the mountain West as everybody else was right. You know I mean? Boise gets a play in game. Uh, you know, New Mexico wins the tournament and they're in Colorado Auburn. state. Yeah. Uh, I, I think one of the game, one of the, I think you could make a case that Auburn, what maybe was a little bit better than a four. They could have maybe gotten down to that to that three area. Um, you know, you talk, I, you talk I, about a streaky team when they yeah. get going, like they're almost unlikable. They're so hard to. I, they're having so much fun clowning. It's like I mean, are you that's, guys. That's like the Bruce Pearl thing, though, right? Like dude, that's what they, he does. They're capable. Boy, and they get hot. I, I'm telling you, I uh, I had Yale at Kansas in late December, and I'm telling you guys. Th- that team's legit. You like they, Wolf? Yale is good. They yeah. got a seven footer, Danny Wolf. Yep. This dude is a unicorn. Like, can handle it. Not like, you know, we say, like, oh, seven, look at this seven footer. He can dribble twice and get through a track. Like, no, this Not dude down. Can, yeah. can Hardaway cross. He can, like, in and out, spin off guys. Like, he is good. They are. That they're older around them, they can shoot it. Yale's a team that I think has got a chance to potentially get through to the second weekend of of the tournament. And then I'll give you one more. I don't even know what our initial question was, but I'll give you one more. Yeah, <laughs> <it doesn't> <laughs> they 
am I crazy to think that Drake could get out no. of get out I, this weekend? So I, I told Ravi, I'm kind of a Pac-12 dork. Washington State's a tough matchup, and I if Drake can get enough stops, they they they're in a good spot because they play so fast. Yeah. And I'm not sure from who from Wazoo is going to guard Tucker, but if their shots, you know, and they're kind of, I mean, the, a good shot is an open shot, so they get them up. <laughs> but man. If they get past Washington State, I, I'm with you. It, it looks good, but Washington State is going to be – it's a tricky matchup the way they play, though. I agree. I think the one thing that – that we're not, not that this is, totally matters because you could have made the same case about Doug a couple of years ago and Creighton couldn't punch all the way through. But I think you can make a you – could, you can say confidently Drake will have the best player on the floor in both games this weekend. Yeah. He's, he's, that matters. he's, he's pretty know? sensational like, and, I mean, and he's fearless. He's fearless. Yes. And, and keep in mind the thing, and this is what's so interesting about the NCAA tournament in general is like, uh, you remember last year, FAU, if Memphis doesn't puke on themselves, <laughs> pee their pants <laughs> and crap their pants, they had to do all three <laughs> for, for FAU to win their first round game. And they go to the final four. Yeah. Drake has Miami beat last year. Yep, Straight good. up beat. And Drake pees their pants in the final minute of the game. And Miami goes to the final four. So to tie it back to Drake, like to, it's largely the same cast of characters that should have beaten a team that went to the final four a year ago. And even though I have un, an amazing amount of respect for what TJ Otzelberger is doing at Iowa State, I mean, it's amazing the toughness that he's getting that group to play with. Yeah, they, they guard, don't they? Oh, man, they are tough. They they are really good. But it ain't like you it, – it, it's not like Iowa State's got, like, a lottery pick. Mm -hmm. so, like, so, so I guess what I'm saying is you, you're good – when Drake takes the floor, like, the discrepancy in just, like, overall talent isn't the Grand Canyon, you know? It, it's closer than it than it looks. I think they get coached up a little bit. So I don't know. I, I kind of look at Drake and I'm like, hmm, now maybe I'm just got some DeVries love pumping through me. But like, <laughs> I think Drake's got a chance, man. He's one of the few guys that I have kind of like a total blind spot for. Right. It does. Like you could say, I don't know. Like I'll probably defend DeVries just yeah. about <laughs> every no, I mean, day. I've known that guy for 20 plus years. I think, the, I think he's just, I think he's awesome. I think he's really good. Total blind spot. Are you at? Does Duke get enough stops for you to not be concerned about them against Vermont? Yeah, I. I tell you what, I I I don't love Duke, but I. So I was in Vermont this weekend. I did Vermont uh, and UMass Lowell's championship game, and I wasn't. I didn't walk away blown away by Vermont either. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're very well coached. I mean, they've John Becker. They're, they're like the Gonzaga of the of the Upper East Coast. I mean, they they are like it is a dynasty that they they have going. I don't know if Vermont they lack size. They're a little banged up inside. I'm just not sure they're going to be able to slow down Filipowski and and everybody inside. I I. I mean the the that old pod Wisconsin and James Madison's a fascinating game. I kind of I would have leaned James Madison, but I kind of liked what Wisconsin looked like this weekend. Me uh, too. But because that'll be a trendy pick. I'm not sure if I'm necessarily going to pull that trigger. I'm so not. it's it's tough. I I don't love Duke, um, but I do think Wisconsin's going to have a tough game. Uh, so who who punches out of that four team pod will be will be interesting too. That's amazing because last week I liked James Madison a ton. Till I saw the draw, and I get the seed numbers too, so it'll be popular. Yeah. But Wisconsin's playing really well, and I think they found like kind of that snake action. Like they're they're what they're doing offensively, they're really starting to settle into too. Yeah, I I completely agree. Uh, and you knew you knew the personnel was you knew it was in them, and they just kind of put it together. And I think I think that matters. I think playing well this time of year makes a difference. And I think Wisconsin, even though they lost yesterday to Illinois in the, in the championship game, I'd, I'd have to imagine they, they're, they're puffing their chest out pretty good right now. Isn't Illinois scary to watch sometimes like what they do offensively. I think they're, I think they, I told they, you guys, they, they got options. I, I told you guys a couple of weeks ago that they're one of those teams that I really like. I, I think Illinois, 
if, if they weren't in UConn's region, I would 100% take Illinois to the Final Four. But unfortunately, I think UConn's going to knock them out in the Elite Eight. Uh, Nick, speaking of Illinois, uh, we've we've talked about Brad Underwood quite a bit and how we, at least I, don't trust him as far as I could throw him in terms of I, I just I'm not I'm not a I'm not enamored with his coaching. Is there a team that you're like, man, I really like the talent. I like how they look, but you're like, man, I'm not a hundred percent sure this guy's gonna be out coaching somebody on their way to a final four or a national championship. Cause DB and I looked at it. The only real outlier in terms of national championships as far as coaches is Kevin Ollie. Yeah. Outside of that, you're either really good or an all timer. Mm. It's a great question. I'm just kind of I'm trying to just like look through the re- to the bracket right now and see the names, any- that, the names that popped to mind. Obviously, we, Brad we Underwood. did we did an exercise um, like three weeks ago. Rick right? Barnes, and there were very very few, if any, outliers in terms. Of, Cal was yeah. kind of an outlier, and we were like, uh, but we think he's a good. No, we don't. But, no, we, but like that's how that's but how Ali good. was the most that's how good the coaches that have won it are is that Cal might be the outlier like coach Cal might be the outlier and that's how that's how good all the other coach like Hurley and Calipari are the next biggest outliers after Ollie so I'm looking at like Rick Barnes I'm looking at Brad Underwood <laughs> I'm, I'm like is okay I'm looking at I mean Tommy Lloyd I'm like is that guy really winning the national title I, I mean, I think the first one that he was the first guy that came to my mind, but I just don't know if that's a product of he hasn't had an opportunity to show sure. you that he can do it yet. You know, sure. um, having seen Princeton, because that's who Princeton beat them last year. So mm-hmm. Princeton beat Arizona in the first round and then Creighton saw Princeton. Once I saw Princeton in person, it, like, I was like, oh, I could kind of see how this team could get you. You know, like mm-hmm. unique style, uh, Tosana Woma. I'm not sure if you guys remember their, their five man that was really good at the top of the key with backdoors and stuff. Like he's playing, he got a 10 day contract. Like Princeton mm-hmm. had an NBA player. Princeton had an NBA player. Like, so I guess I left that game being like, ah, oh, like I left being like, I get it with Arizona and how they, how they lost. I would say Tommy Lloyd jumps out at me. Um, I've, I've, uh, even though, even though he's, he's made some decent, decent runs, he went to the final four a couple of years ago. I'm not sure on Bruce Pearl would maybe be one guy for me. I'm not, I'm not, I could buy that totally, totally like all in on, on him on the sidelines doing his thing. Uh, but you're right. It is interesting when you, when you stop for a second and think about who ultimately is left standing at the end of this thing, very rarely. Are you ever left going, well, I don't know about that, Coach? <laughs> hey, does, does, does your gut real quick, Nick, tell you that Nebraska can keep Mighty Mouse out of the paint or Taylor the fourth out of the paint? Yeah. I think so, uh, especially with, with the fact that you're not as worried about his ability to shoot the three. There should be people just clogging that lane up. Imagine if A&M can't pass out of the double. They're in trouble. Yeah. I, you know, interesting matchup. Uh, you could build a case – that will make you want to go get a bottle of whiskey and go, oh, my God, this isn't good. <laughs> you, know, you know, you can also build a case where it makes you go get a bottle of champagne and go, ooh, we're going to be celebrating <laughs> later this week, you know? I, I mean, because Texas A&M doesn't shoot it well, and that's a, a large part, a, a huge key in beating Nebraska. That you're going to be able to get threes. And they're, they're, a poor, they're one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country. They rank 352nd in the country in three-point shooting. There are 362 teams. Okay, guys? So, <laughs> we're talking about arguably the worst, the worst three-point shooting team in, in the country. And then the other thing is a big part, just the three-point line in general is big for Nebraska to get you to dork out with some Ken Palm analytics. So – Texas A&M gives up 37% of their points given up are from the three-point line, okay? Mm. That ranks 10th most in the country. Mm. Mm. So A&M gives up a lot of threes. And so Nebraska, I think I think Nebraska, if they're making their threes and A&M shoots how they're supposed to be shooting, I think you're looking at history being made for, for the program. But – Offensive rebounding, best team in America, AM, that could be a great equalizer. And then the other thing I keep on saying, I said it about some, some of these teams, experience matters. AM basically returns their entire team from a year ago, and they were in the NCAA tournament a year ago. They lost to Penn State, but they were there. 
I'll be interested when Rink Mass, Josiah Alec, Bryce Williams, Kase Tominaga, all, when they step, Jawan Gary, when they step on the floor, what's their anxiety level at? Mm. Like, I think AM will be the more comfortable team. Now, Nebraska's got to settle in as soon as they can. Uh, but I, I I think the more the more I've looked at it, the more I think it's a it's a pretty favorable draw for Nebraska. But that doesn't mean that this isn't going to be a war because it is. Nick, we appreciate Fantastic. the time as always. I'll be hoping that your anxiety level is not too high with Creighton, Oregon, and Kansas all in the same region. <laughs> Uh, I'll be praying for you, brother. I hope you're okay. Um, hope you can get out of that thing uh, with your blood pressure intact. I will. I will. I will hope so as well. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, Nicholas Allen. We'll yep. be back with more Heard at Sports Radio. We'll be back. We'll be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Welcome back to Hurt at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities, KFOR in Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We are live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, where we're at least 500% better than anything else you could be doing this morning. Uh, as you either get started at work or on your way to work, whatever you want to do, um, just having a good time here uh, at Herd at Sports Radio. Want to tell you about the Warhorse Sportsbook Prop Card Challenge, hundred thousand dollar Prop Card Challenge for the semifinals and final game of the tournament. Twenty five prop questions, get eighteen or more correct to win cash or free play. You can earn daily entries through the twenty eighth. That means a $50 sports book bet or 50 points earned on slots or racing. Of course, you do have to be a War Horse Rewards member as well. You'll make your prop card selections online and make sure you activate those entries between April 1st and April 5th. Also, with the bracket challenge, make sure you are getting your picks in. You've got until the 20th. That's two more days to make your picks for the bracket challenge for your chance to win $1 million. That's Warhorse 
Bracket Challenge, War Horse Prop Card Challenge. You can get all the details at warhorsecasino.com, War Horse Sportsbook, No Bets, No Glory. DB, how we doing? We doing all right? We're good. We're doing good? Yeah, I am going to go to my uh, my like my like settings thing. Yeah, see what we can figure out here. I, so, you know, back to – it's just – it's great to talk to him because we – um, not that we agree on a lot of things, but he's seen a lot of the same teams that I kind of like. Mm-hmm. Um. That that Boise team is pretty interesting, and I'm I do like if Drake can get past Iowa State or, or Washington Iowa State, State, Washington State. You like and their I, matchup with Iowa State? I do. Yeah, because Iowa State now they're going to shut you down, mm-hmm. but they have a really hard time scoring. There's a lot of Virginia in them, and that they're better at it this year. Their dribble drive game, Drake, mm-hmm. they get to some spots on the floor. You know, D Rock is really good offensively. Mm-hmm. The other Which thing. Which is funny because he made his bones on defense. Yeah. The other thing, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't, are you trending towards a 12-5? Because I'm really, I, I know. You know the numbers. Yeah. I don't know that I love one. I mean. You, you, I don't know that I love one of the matchups. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Honestly, the Gonzaga one's probably the one that I'm most, most interested yeah, and in. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't either. Yeah. I haven't seen McNeese enough to feel good about that. I they mean, can. Sc- they're going to want to play in a way that's advantageous to Gonzaga. So I, I mean, you're basically you're hoping just you make more shots than Gonzaga at that point, which I, I don't know that I haven't seen enough of McNeese State. I'd basically just be picking against Gonzaga, which I don't love doing. And when I'm making picks, is just picking against a team I don't like if I'm not super familiar with their matchup. So um, that's a uh, that's a concern for me. Is yeah, I don't I don't know that there are a lot of twelve fives that I'm. I mean. I know New Mexico is going to be popular at the 11-6. Yeah, I think they're, the 11-6s are, there's a lot of those. But I don't, I mean, if James Madison had gotten somebody else besides Wisconsin, like if James Madison had gotten Gonzaga, you're taking that 12-5? Maybe. Like you I like that a you know, I like, like the way, James, I like the way James yeah, Madison Yeah, you like James plays. Madison, you're not super high on Gonzaga. I just don't know, I just don't think they can speed Wisconsin up. No, I know it's going to be hard. I, I don't look at any of the 12 fives and be like, yeah, that's the obvious one. But I, I do think Will Wade has a lot of good players at McNeese State. Like, yeah. I mean, and why he's still coaching Division One basketball, I don't know. No but, one knows. But, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, everything he did was basically legal now. So, the, uh, oh, he just, I mean, lied a lot to, you know, federal investigators. That usually, well, that part's gets not pe- as usually, legal. Usually gets people in trouble. Yeah, he usually ends up within prison. But um, well, I don't know. We'll see. I don't. Are there any? Do you like any? Because this we've seen a little bit of trend of fours and thirteens. Are there any thirteens you're kind of leaning at? Because you don't love Alabama, do you? No. Uh, but uh, but I do think you have to be familiar with Alabama's style. Do I think Charleston can win? No. I don't think Sanford can get. Can what about get, Yale? I don't. Nick brought that one up. I don't like it. You don't like I, that one. You know, and we watch shoot, we watched Yale Brown yesterday as a family. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't go off of that game and say, like, yeah, Yale can beat But Auburn. I knew he was talking about Wolf though, because for sure. Like he he's 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 pretty sweet, but um I don't really see that. Auburn plays with so many guys. Yeah. And they play fast. They play kind of super cat. Now they style. didn't start getting any quad one wins until the the SEC tournament. Pretty deep. Pretty deep. <laughs> I think they were one and eight going into that thing, or yeah. one and seven. Yeah. In quad one games. How many? They, I bet you they don't have more than three quad one wins, do they? Unless they racked them up in the SEC tournament because they were going in with only, I think they were one and seven in in quad one. You know, we'll look that wins up. Wins heading into the SEC tournament. So they hadn't beaten a lot of good. They've only got t- three total. Yeah. And they got two of them in the SEC. Thank yeah. you. Dude. DB, what's up? What's Nailed up? it. Well, because I looked at them as kind of a sneaky pick, and I'm like, no, nah, they can't be. Because they haven't played anybody. Because they haven't played anybody. Yeah. Because there's some people that wanted to take a flyer on them in the SEC tournament. Mm-hmm. And I was like, eh, they're going to do yeah. something they don't normally do. Yeah, but it so was it a was neutral site. Mississippi State and, and Florida were their, were their, neut- were their uh, the other quad, quad ones. Wins. So, so they were one in seven. So I don't love that one. Who's it. my other 13-4? Uh, your other thirteen four. Okay, I'm missing one. Uh, Vermont Duke. Did you yeah. say that one? You didn't say that. I one. didn't say that one. Um, I don't love Duke, although they fit a lot of the metrics. Mm-hmm. 
to to make a run. They're probably like a they're not in the top tier, but second tier. No, you kind of eyeball them. You don't feel great um, about it. No, I don't. I don't think they can slow Duke down. Vermont, yeah, probably not. And I don't think they can outscore them. Like you're, that's not a track meet. They're going to win. A game could be mucky though. Wouldn't surprise me if it's played like, you know, seventy to fifty-eight, something oh, like that. Yeah, like they just try to make it as ugly as possible for them. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I I get that. But no, there. I don't love any thirteen four. I don't really love any twelve fives. No, there's not a lot of the, your traditional upset seeds that you feel good about. And plus, with a lot the, of six eleven seven ten mess, which is what screwed up some of the the seedings with the bid stealers. Yeah. But this may be a cleaner bracket than people think. Yeah. I was thinking about that earlier because there might be a little chaos in like the, like we said, eight, nine, six, seven, tens. Even the, I'll even go six, eleven. So like the six through 11 seeds might be a little chaotic, but it would, it would pretty aggressively surprise me. BYU, Duquesne, you like BYU. Yeah. You think NC State's beating Texas Tech? I, I don't coin flip. I don't know. I don't oh. feel good about Texas Tech. Oregon, South Carolina. I don't, see, that's hard because I, I don't, you know, Oregon wasn't a tournament team until yesterday. I don't know. You know what I mean? I at what is that game? Probably a pick them. Yeah. I mean, that's a coin. I think the six elevens. What, what did Vegas make it? You know, uh, I'm going to look. I can look real quick because I would imagine that line is pretty tweet. Uh, one and a half. Yeah. Okay. Carolina, South Carolina by one and a half. That makes sense. So, I mean, I, I think you're going to get the 6-11s are all going to be, I mean, what's the other one? Clemson, we know New Mexico's uh, two favorite on Clemson. So, you have a two, a one, and a half. I'm checking Texas Tech, NC State, because I don't know what the, uh, Texas Tech is four and a half there. That's probably the biggest spread on the 6-11s. Oh, wow, that is tight. Duquesne and BYU. No, that's the biggest spread. Yeah, eight and a half. BYU's eight and a half. Okay. But, I mean, I would feel dramatically better about the chaos in the six through 11 seeds. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 versus, I don't know. I look at the top seeds and of course they'll probably be totally wrong. Now we'll have like three 15 seeds win or something, but I probably not, but I wouldn't mind if uh, coach Lutz took out Marquette for me. Wouldn't, wouldn't be mad about that. Yeah. It was just funny listening to Shaka smart. Um, and this isn't a press conference, so don't get make fun of me for watching. It, I it was just an I interview. Never, it was just a no, it was just, just a different a nor, team. Just a normal interview. It wasn't a presser that I was watching. It's but possible you put you you spent a little too much time listening to coaches talk. He was throwing a little shade at John Rostein, who asked him about Kolick. It was the first thing he asked, him, maybe before he even said congratulations. <laughs> Probably. And Shaka Smarts. Yeah, you know, I, I could wait for you to text me every day like you've been doing. You're not going <laughs> to wait for the the daily text asking me about the Tyler Kolick situation. <laughs> But Shaka said he fully expects Kolick to play on Friday, even though he's got to pass some testing protocols. He said he's he's passed the pain portion of it mm. in, in the oblique. So I, th I think that's a good sign. That, I think that's a good sign for uh, Marquette as well. But, you know, if, if he just wants to sit one more game and give my guy Steve Lutz a chance to uh, have a little upset, I'll be, I'll be, it's, it's I'll be okay about that. How about uh, all the folks from Coach Max Coaching Tree represented? There is this a deal. ton, like a lot. So you got Hendo, Lutz, Lutz, DeVries, uh, TJ, TJ. That's four. I uh, thought there was another. Th there's one. a fifth. So Darren, Hendo, Lutz, TJ. I thought there was one more. Uh, yeah, there's. Huss didn't make it. Okay. They lost in their in yep. their championship. Is there five? Four. Uh, I think it's just four. I think I think Huss would have been the fifth. That's deep. It's not bad. It's not bad for a guy that people aren't sure, you know, nationally. Would you stop? No, nationally, he probably doesn't get the love that he deserves. Top, top ten in the country. More Hurt at Sports Radio coming up next. We will be back.
we will be back. We will be back. We'll be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. We're wrapping up the show here on Hurt at Sports Radio on a Monday. AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities, KFOR in Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're brought to you by the Team Jack Foundation. Team Jack Foundation is has a very simple goal. They are trying to find better treatments for kids fighting brain cancer and one day a cure. In order to help them do that, go to teamjackfoundation.org to donate directly, find events to get involved in, just get more information on what projects they're working on, projects that include partnerships with the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Memorial Sloan Kettering, and Columbia University. Of course, they get involved right here at home as well with the creation of the Nebraska Childhood Brain Tumor Program at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. That is the Team Jack Foundation. They're trying to make find better treatments and one day a cure for childhood brain cancer. Get involved at teamjackfoundation.org. As we wrap up the show here with a uh, little bit of a, a cleanup, I, I did want to change gears because I – I uh, I think it's worth mentioning. Obviously, Omaha hockey had a good weekend um, with a series win against Colorado College. Another team that had a good weekend, Nebraska baseball. Yes, they did. They continue to play some quality ball there uh, against Nickel State this weekend. And I know there's a lot going on. We're not going to spend a ton of time on hockey and baseball this time of year, even though uh, – they deserve uh, at least some attention, but 
I mean, Nebraska gave it to Nickel State pretty good over the weekend. That's yeah. well, seven six, sixteen oh, eleven four. Um, really good. That, that's there. how they, that's how they kind of have to handle these series as you get ready to start. You're, you're getting ready to start conference play here in a couple of weeks, so that would be nice. Yeah, you got to keep it rolling here. You're not going to get a ton of help in conference play, I don't think, from strength of schedule and whatnot. Not if early season starts have anything to do with it. So you're going to have to kind of roll through conference play if you're Nebraska to to have a good shot of being where you want to be at the end of the season. Uh, and then I mentioned Omaha Hockey dropped a really rough game. Was it Friday they blew the lead? Late, yeah. Uh, blew the 3-0 lead Friday, go to overtime and lose. I think they were up still 3-2 under a minute left. They give up the equalizer, lose in overtime. You kind of wonder emotionally how a team's going to bounce back from something like that. No problem for the Mavs. They win the next two to win that series against Colorado College and move on. Um, to the frozen face-off for the first time since 2005, I believe. Yeah, let's get it. That is a – I know you have an affinity for Omaha, as Omaha. Uh, as does the the man in charge of her that has the affinity for Omaha as well. I haven't seen Dollar Bill in a minute. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you told me to leave him alone. You said he only had so much bandwidth that he could work <laughs> with. did I say that? that? And I was like <laughs> – I was like three weeks ago. It was a total Ravi term, too. What bandwidth? Yeah, you're like I think he's only got so much bandwidth that he can work with. Right well, I now. think everybody only has so much bandwidth they can yeah, work with. I didn't with. think that about me. I was like, wow. And I'm going, <laughs> I didn't. I, been, I was gone no. for five. I was gone for five months. We got a gatekeeper. I remember that conversation. I wasn't talking about you. I wasn't. Oh, we'll have to revisit off air. Okay, that's fine. Um, no, we've got uh, we've got some good stuff happening locally, obviously, and then uh, Nebraska women and Creighton women also dancing. Would be remiss if we didn't. Mentioned that as well. I thought Creighton maybe got a little bit of the short end on their seating. You talking about women? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah. The Creighton men are exactly where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Three seed is, but the women probably deserved a little better than the seven. This lack of, I, I thought they were six for sure. Yeah. Seven seemed a little low, but how would you like to be in? I didn't love their seedings either, but I know you're not going to get in the weeds over going deep in the the basketball seedings on that side of the ledger, but. Iowa got a brutal draw. LSU's the three. Yeah. And Iowa's region. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like, I feel like it's by far the most difficult region. To get out of. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think that they were rewarded as the overall number two. Yeah. They didn't get, nobody did them any favors there. That nope. is a nope. brutal region to get out of. If they do get out of it, it will be well deserved to yeah. to get that place in the final four. And I thought, like, for eyeballs, mm -hmm. I don't know. It doesn't seem like you gave that one much thought, unless you think more people would potentially want to see. Do you think they sacrificed eyeballs late to try and get them early? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because like, I, I maybe we're giving them too much credit too on the seatings. If you're, you know, if you're kind of, because I mean, listen, we were starting to get into this in the first segment and surprise surprise we got off the rails and got onto something else but it, might, it, that might have been your trev meltdown i didn't melt down until like the third segment thank you <laughs> um i was incredibly mature for the first like 35 minutes of the show yeah. and then i said he can eat one um but the you know I, I love how the committee's like, oh, we don't we don't really talk think about storylines and stuff like that. They put Nebraska and Texas A and M together in both tournaments. Yeah, there's tons of storylines. And then you've got Creighton possibly playing Dana in round two. Like I South Dakota, Iowa State. Miss me and yes. Drake and Miss me with the storylines. I mean Pollard, they know, he knows. Like, just admit, hey, we're producing a television product. We're trying to put together the most or even back in the day when they put uh, McDermott and Harrison Barnes in round two. Like, yeah. come on. You, you like, know we know what we're doing here. It's fine. Just well, say it out loud. It's why, fine. Why are you bringing up Carolina and Creighton? You guys won that game? Just saying. Like, yeah, I mean, there was a Kendall Marshall situation there. It was a little rough for you, but. It cost him the tournament. Allegedly. We don't know what happened. <laughs> Much like with the rest of Bo Jackson's career. We can never know. It's just so dismissive. <laughs> I still no, like, I actually really like Kendall I still, Marshall. I still like Grant Gibbs, though. I do too. I I really liked Kendall Marshall. I really liked that Carolina team. 
They were. Um, they were. I really thought you good. said. I thought you said. Oh, you really like Bo Jackson. No, nobody would ever having, say that. I thought you were having a moment. Shane, there. you said you can't see. You didn't say you can't hear. I can't see anything. I can't read. I can't read. Well, we knew that already, but that's not related to the eyesight. I don't think. Um, for like the, are you a watch it in now? Nah, Princeton was standing when I met you at um, AR 15s. Yeah, his little, little hole, hole in the wall spot. Yeah. Are you a go watch games in public kind of guy? You you don't mind that stuff, do you? I don't mind it. I prefer early, not. early, not late. Yeah. I'm not trying to watch Creighton out somewhere. I'd prefer not to do that. Yeah. Um, kind of how I'd be with Nebraska. Yeah. I actually kind of want to watch Nebraska somewhere because I kind of want to be around it. Like, I want to be around people for that one. Yeah. Especially if they win. Just the vitriol. Yeah. And also, I just want to feel the hatred. <laughs> like, I want to go I want to go full Sith here and just, like, feel the hate flowing through yeah. me. Yeah. Round the tater tots on you here. Heard like, that. I want to channel the hate for Trev, and I want to be around all of it. Right? Shane, what else do you want people to eat here besides the, the tater tots? Which are fire, I heard. Oh, they're fire. Well, you ate here for a month straight. I ate here for, like, three months straight during football season. <laughs> I ate here so much. Yeah. Just get any like the club sandwiches or anything. I hadn't like eaten it's, here. It's, it's very, it's very, very, very good. Until like a week ago, I hadn't eaten here since football season because I like I just I was here so much. Yeah. And it's good, but I was like, I need a little break. It's like it's not you, it's me. Like I need a little, <laughs> you know. Uh but I'm I'm back and I missed it. You know, I, I had uh I like the I like I'm I know you don't like boneless wings, but I'm a boneless wing guy. Yeah, you're too old to be making conscious efforts to eat that. I mean, no disrespect to anybody that this order the all no. the food you can at it, but you already know I like the food here. But you, of all the yeah. things you could get, like uh, I like pop, popcorn ones. chicken is is amazing. Listen, you're it's talking to the same choice. guy that has a professional chef wife, and when she does volunteer to cook stuff, which is not often, on more than one occasion, I'd be like, "Can I just get some mac and cheese and hot dogs?" <laughs> Wow, <laughs> which is crazy because as we're we're going through prices last week, yeah, like meal prices for families and stuff, yeah. And you looked at me and you're like, "I rather we just go to mahogany." <laughs> I'm like, it wasn't even in the discussion, <laughs> right? We were talking about like three for ten ninety nines and two for twenty fives, and you went all the way to mahogany. Well, because but, and also the same guy that said, "Yeah, you know, my you got a good friend, he, you know." He, runs v merts and like sometimes they just they just give us you know unopened or open bottles of wine just like because they can't resell them i was like oh it's kind of crap we're rolling with dude matt brown's my guy <laughs> he's the man we're just that's that's how we're doing it yeah absolutely you're, but you're standing on business for old chili salsa huh <laughs> dude you saw the response that on was twitter that was unbelievable yeah like people are riding for chili salsa it's so good yeah. Listen, I'm like you. You say, "Hey, we don't like the we don't like some of the people that say certain things, but you find truth in it anyway." Yeah, I'll find good food anywhere. Yeah, and chili they, and chili salsa is one of them. No, I'm with you. I that's very. It's a, I'll ride with that. And you like it because of its its. I like the consi- the the, the texture, cons- the consistency of it. It's really good. Gotcha. It's no, all no. blended up. You ain't got no chunks in there. You got to no worry leftover about leftover onions at the bottom of the no salsa it's all for you. Blended up, it's incredible. So you'd be anti pico. No, I'm okay with pico, but I prefer the texture of chili stuff better. Like salsa? Yeah. Pico's, Pico's a little chunky for it, me. No, it's a lot. Yeah. I don't love, like, biting into a tomato. It's not my favorite, like, texture food-wise. Yeah, I kind of like that with onions. I don't mind an onion because I'm okay with the crunch, but the problem with an onion is when you bite into it, the, there's too much, there's, like, an overwhelming amount of flavor, and so you lose whatever else you're eating. Mm. And it's just about the onion at that point. Not about, I don't like that. <laughs> I have strong feelings about so principled about things. So so principled. My only point last week was, listen, you've got like a family of six or twelve. I don't know how many people are in yeah. your family anymore. <laughs> you got a ton of people to feed. It's like the same price for me and the wife just to go to mahogany somewhere I like. <laughs> hey, by the way, I want to apologize to everybody for not having you guys on video for the last half hour. But as Tiger Shark Diver says, Trev stole the video. So blame it on him. <laughs> Everything's Trev's fault. That's like that's the nice thing about having uh, a villain now. And the, everything's Trev's fault. Maybe tomorrow our connection won't keep getting. We're working on it. You know, we're, we're trying to hardwire in. We'll ba- figure it out. Baby steps. Maybe, maybe not. We'll have a show, though, tomorrow on Herd Sports Radio.